us to oh. shut us out and ignore us and act like we don't exist. Look. We are going to read our names again. Time and clear. The rest of you are all waiting. promoting anti-Palestinian sentiments and ignoring credible threats to Palestinian and Arab communities on campus has contributed to the creation of the atmosphere responsible for the violence that we saw this past weekend. We demand the following. We demand that UVM acknowledge Palestine and the suffering of Palestinians. We demand transparency in regards to past and future canceled events and support with reorganizing them. Yeah! We demand the creation of a robust accountability system for admin and faculty that engage in anti-Arab and Islamophobic rhetoric. We demand that UVM commit to providing robust support services to Palestinian students. We demand clarity and transparency on the canceling of Mohammed al Khord's lecture. <laughs> and we demand that UVM commit to not canceling events held by Palestinian organizers on campus. <laughs> we demand that UVM commit to providing an open and accessible line for dialogue with student movements. UVM divest all financial holdings from Israel.
Because not only is UVM silent, they are enriching their endowment through their investments in the ongoing occupation of Palestine. Sidewinder missiles, 
Hell of Fire 2 missiles, Hayway laser guided bombs, rocket launchers, Mercado tanks, high frequency radios, other communications equipment, and advanced radar systems. Union as of 2010, Union had $482,000 invested in General Electric. Shame! Shame! General Electric supplies engines for the X-35 fighter jet and a variety of other military aircraft, including propul the propulsion system for Israel's AH-64 Apache assault helicopter. And they Shame! 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 Lockheed Martin provides service contracts for engineering support and testing of Israel's weapons. Shame! As of 2010, you've been invested $165,000 $165,700 in Boeing Corporation. The F-15 fighter jet, the C-47 cargo helicopter, the Apache assault helicopter, B-707 transport plane, guided bomb units, joint direct assault munitions, harpoon missiles. Shame. Shame. In addition, Union has invested $102,000 in Honeywell International. Shame! Shame! Honeywell supplies cluster bombs. Shame! Potential navigation systems for fighter jets and torpedoes. Shame! UVM invests in ITC, which supplies ejectors, which supplies X-16s, which supplies cable assemblies, and other release mechanisms to keep the Israeli war machine going. Shame! UVM has invested $205,000 into United Technologies with its subsidiary division and its subsidiary division, Sikorsky and Pratt Whitney, supply C-53, Z Stanley and attack helicopters, Black Hawk attack helicopters, and engines for fighters and bombers. Shame! UVM, UVM, UVM has $306,000 invested in Hewlett Packard, and Hewlett Packard subsidiary, EDS Israel, supplies, supplies the Ministry of Defense with a basal system which is an automated biometric access control system for Palestinian workers. This is part of a system of control to use Palestinian, work, to use Palestinian workers while underpaying them and keeping them a threat of being deported to a war zone. In addition, UVM has these, these systems are installed in major checkpoints in Gaza and the West Bank. In addition, HP has several, has several contracts to supply technology to the Israeli army. Army, including a two year contract for the supply of PCC Army. Shame! Shame! In addition, UVM has $200,000 invested in LI Identity Solutions Incorporated, which supplies iris based and fingerprint identity recognition to track, to track Palestinians. Shame! Shame! UVM has $45,000 invested in Motorola, and Motorola Israel supplies. supplies to, Surveillance systems to Israel to monitor settlements in the West Bank and provide security to settlements, which which displace and steal the homes of Palestinians. Shame! 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 Holdings, UVM invested $8,000 in, which and L3 Communications Holdings provides homeland defense products and services, including the previously mentioned scanners for Gaza's for Gaza's checkpoints and for scanners in the West Bank. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. In addition, UVM has invested $62,000 in Dell, which supplied 50,000 PCs to the to the to the IDF for over three years at a total cost of 200 million. Which is well below the market value of these laptops. So they sold, they sold laptops to the IDF at a discount to, to fuel occupation. 
Shame! And if these, these computers I use to enforce, to use to enforce systems of control, these systems, these computers I use to support army and IDF, what IDF mobilizations against the people of Gaza. Shame! 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 And finally, Valero Energy Corporation. Uh, UVM has invested thirty thousand dollars and is a major supplier of fuel to the Israeli military. Shame! Shame! UVM must divest in order for it to commit to being a just and safe community. In the 1980s, this, this we are not. In the 1980s, UVM there was a fight on campus over the divestment of UVM from a, from apartheid South Africa. During this fight. UVM claimed that they were better by investing, and they were better by keeping money in these, in the, in these hor in this horrific country, in that horrific country. Disgusting. Shit. And since then, UVM is continuing this pattern. They took it took years for for administrators to recognize the damage that they were doing by refusing to divest. And they are continuing this pattern to this day. However, just in the 80s, in 1986, UVM students won the ch won the chance to divest. Won the opportunity. One divestment from South Africa and apartheid regime. We yeah. yeah. must do it again. That's right. Yeah. 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 UVM students, UVM students won when when we pushed UVM to divest from the when we pushed UVM to divest from fossil fuels. We must do that again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. This is not normal. It Thank is you. not normal for the place that we pay money to get an ed education, to have investments, to profit off of death in Palestine. Shame! 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 can and must divest, and we will force them to divest. We will demand that they will divest, and we will show up. We will keep showing up until they divest from Israel. Divest! And UVM did not claim to care about the shooting down the road of three Palestinian men. Shame! 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 The death of Palestinians in Palestine from the death of Palestinians here. UVM, UVM cannot claim to care about to be heartbroken by the shooting of three Palestinian men down the road when they actively profit off the death of Palestinians. Fuck you, Fuck you, Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. UVM received over $3 million in self reported funding from the Department of the Defense almost every year. Where does it go? Do we know where it goes? We do not. Where does it go? Where we contract out our dining has a nearly billion dollar contract with the Department of Defense. Sodexo is the largest institutional caterer in the occupied state of Palestine. Shame! Shame. The CEO of Sodexo actively works with the idea he retrained Haredi soldiers who were so violent in their battalion that our own government initiated an investigation into them prior to this escalation in the war.
jobs and education. Not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education. Not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education. Not for war and occupation. Money for staff and education. Not for war and occupation. Money for staff and education. Not for war and occupation. Money for staff and education. Not for war and occupation. Money for staff and education. Not for war. Yeah. 
and they can divest. They can listen to us and begin to protect Palestinian students through the demands that we have laid out for them. They can either do that or they can continue to ignore us, continue to be silent, continue to repress us, continue to punish us for speaking out against this genocide that they are funding. Which one's it going to be, Suresh? Which one's it going to be? Are you going to listen to us or are you going to open your fucking eyes?
take the rest. We're not act surprised that it has come to this. Because we have been pleading with him for months. We have been asking politely for months to listen, to listen to Palestinian students who are afraid, who are unsafe, who feel unsupported, and he does not listen. So we cannot just walk away when he doesn't listen to us. We have to demand it. And we are going to stay here and continue demanding it until he listens.
something to come out and be with you for a few minutes. Good for you. Um, Amara's here as well. Jonathan um, is not respectful! 
That's Happy. right. Woo! Stop yelling at me, that'd be great. Um, okay. The president's not here. He is off campus at meeting. Speak up! 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 I'm not sure what you want me to respond to first. Associates to come a little closer. We're, we're giving you a heads up. Yes. You want a crowd? We'll give you one. There's some room up here. There's some room up here. Yeah, there's yeah. lots of room. We're close enough for you. Keep moving up. Keep moving up. Keep moving up, y'all. Oh, you want to move up? It's good. It's good. I'm trying to make it helpful for you. All right. We're going to give you the courtesy of listening to what you have to say. But we are not here to negotiate with you. We are not here to reason with you. We are here for our demands. So unless you want to say something to that effect, you might as well not speak at all. No, I'm actually here to, to find out what they are. If you've got some information I can share yeah. with the administrative team, we're yeah, happy to do that. The, Absolutely. The, the president's not here right now. Um, so, Amir and I are here to gather information. We'll give that information to the president, the chief of staff. Thank you. And um, if you have questions of us, we're happy to try to answer them if they're within our purview. And short of that, we just wanted to make sure you knew that we knew you're. We know you're here. We appreciate the effort and energy that's going into this. Uh, we understand the complexities of, of what's happening worldwide. And uh, it's not there's nothing complex. It's not complex. Oh. It's not Seven thousand children are murdered. Is that complex enough for you? Over Twenty thousand people have been murdered in fifty-two days. It's complicated. It's complicated because of the money. It's complicated because you need to pay bills and you need to divest. That's why it's complicated. To nothing. Amara and I spend our days working to keep you safe. And I spend my days worrying about my safety. Yeah, you have you thought about doing your job? Stay safe. 
Folks. Us or you? you? Folks. You're okay it. with settlements, right? How much money do you have in bank from settlements? How much money does this come into this university from settlements? Tell us. How much? How much? Folks, I don't Tell have anything us. to do with the budget. That's I do not know the answer to those questions. That's I, I, I can't even so finish a sentence. So nothing. when you're ready, we are ready to, to actually we have a conversation and not just scream at me, we will come back. We know what Until you have to say, time, we don't like it. We'll, you are ending genocide. You are ending genocide. Hold yourself out right. people ask questions. I will tell you right now. There is no conversation to be had. There is only our demands and your decision to meet them or not. So you have them in your hand right now. You can take them to Suresh because he was too cowardly to come out and face us ourselves, himself. And I'll read them just so that there's no confusion about what we want. We want UVM to acknowledge Palestine and the suffering of Palestinians adequately, not in any kind of bullshit that they've done so far. They took two months, over two months, to even say the word Palestine. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Palestinians are not unicorns. We do exist. We're out there. We want transparency in regards to past and future canceled events and support with reorganizing them. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! We want the creation of a robust accountability system for admin and faculty that engage in anti-Arab and Islamophobic rhetoric. Yeah. We want UVM to commit to providing robust support services to Palestinian students. Yeah. We want full clarity and transparency on the cancellation of Mohammed al Kord's lecture. Yeah. And we want UVM to, can to commit to not canceling events held by organizers on campus. Yep. Yep. And we want UVM to provide an open and accessible line for dialogue with student movements because sending you out because Suresh is too afraid while well, we've been forced to all come here is not dialogue. Yep. Yep. And finally, we want UVM to divest all financial holdings from Israel. And until, until, until UVM does all of those, then none of your words mean a thing. None of your coming out and doing us the courtesy of talking to us, having a civil conversation. None of that means a damn thing. So, action! Action! Speak louder than words! In addition, your security. In addition, your security cameras mean nothing. Your security okay. other than the pervasive atmosphere of racism. You cannot shield us from pain. And speaking to you, as the dean of security or compliance and whatever, more surveillance is not going to do a fucking thing to make anybody feel more safe on this campus. It makes us I want to hear your about thoughts. It. And the fact what, that we have to tell this to you is shameful, and that speaks to your incapability to protect Palestinian students. It's hard for us to listen to you when we haven't been given a platform for you to listen to us, or for the administration to listen to us. We feel disrespected, which is why we act the way we do. Because we've been treated with such disrespect for so long. Yeah. You have come here to represent Suresh. I know you specifically might not individually have That's done right. all of this, but you have come here as a representative of the administration, and you have to understand that. I understand that, and I, I, I appreciate that you're not feeling safe. Um, and I appreciate you letting me say a couple sentences. Um, our team, Art, I said I, I appreciate the sentiment. I appreciate the fact that folks are feeling unsafe. Our team, Amer's team, are here to do our best to create a safe environment on campus 
for all students, in particular at this moment, in the wake of what happened on Saturday, we have extra focus on our Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim students. Why did it and take three students getting shot, that? though, for you to care? It, that's, that's not what I'm saying. That's, that's, not, what you're saying. Saying. that's, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, we're as long. I'm saying that in the wake of particular. Why don't we do this at a different time when we can actually hey, have Hey, you're supposed to be in charge. You should be able to talk to this group. Just continue speaking. All I'm going to be doing is interrupting you. people. That's fine. That's why. We're interrupting you. You can interrupt us. I don't know. That's not the way a conversation works. We, yeah. we pay you to ask you You have to say, and you don't listen to us. So we would really like to know what you have to say right now. I, I am trying to listen to you and respond to some of the things you're saying. Every time I start talking, you interrupt me. Well, speak up then. Feels like you're using interruption as an excuse. I'm using interrupt as an excuse. Just keep yeah. talking. Not to say it. You talk over, talk loud enough. <laughs> if you have conviction of your voice, you should it's be loud enough. Do it if you want to hear your students. How does it make sense to do that kind of conduct like that? Dude, why have you refused to call the shooting a hate crime? That's not what we've done. That is exactly what we've done. You said no loaded no. No loaded no. Still searching for loaded. Remember and when they had an apprehended suspect yet? Yeah, they said there was no threat. Are you there. ready to listen for, give me 30 seconds on, just answer one right. question. I'll play the timer. Okay. <laughs> wait, one sec, wait, one sec, you're 30 we seconds. We held a forum yesterday. I very clearly said this is a hate-motivated event. A hate crime is a specific thing. Everyone involved in this event unless there's evidence of that. It's a distinction without a difference. But at this point, we don't call it a hate crime for technical reasons. It is a clearly a, an event motivated by hate. If that is not enough, I, I can't fix the fact that the criminal justice system identifies a hate crime in a particular way. But you're absolutely right. It's a hate motivated event. I, I haven't heard anyone say that that's not the case. I heard you say that's not the case when you yeah. said no motive is known. That's correct. It's no motive well, is known. There's very that's, that's clearly not, a motive. That doesn't mean it's not a hate motive. And you have no motive is known. I have a question for you. Why did we get from the Palestinian Arab Muslim students that they were going to be shot in Um, I'm going to take that feedback back. That's not. That's all I can do, folks. Uh, I'm in the safety and security business. I don't see very secure. Doing a shit job at it. We're Come protest are, with us. Is is there? Come protest with us. If you, if you Come want to protest with us. If you're serious, come sit here with us and work with us. I'm here with you now because I respect the fact that you will lay on the ground in solidarity with the dead Palestinians. You will lay on the ground in solidarity with the dead Palestinians. That is complicit. If you're serious about it, come sit here with us and protest. Bring all the faculty to protest with us. Come on! Come on, put your life on the line. Put your words where you are speaking. You're saying those words? She's going to ask you what she's I'm here with you now. No, you're not here with us. You are against us. For them That's not true. If, I dis it, it, if we didn't want to hear, if I didn't want to hear what you had to say, I would have just stayed in the meeting that I was in and not canceled it to come be here with you. Okay? If your family's uh, life was on the line, you wouldn't do this. You would sit. You can join us. Yes. Well, we're all missing our this. education and jobs right now. Like you can sit with us. Yeah. 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 That's, That's not my family role family in the process. I appreciate what the is invitation. What is your role? Who platforms you have a voice? Why don't you use it? When you're in the safety business, we have to stay as neutral as possible. But this is not a neutral business.
Don't misunderstand why I'm standing here. I'm not here to, I, to listen. Then don't complain when you get interrupted. Well, when I ask a question and I try to respond, that's the problem. So, All right. What, 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 do you, anything to add? Square one, what are you here for? I'm here to listen, to figure out, because I, I wasn't here, so I can't hear what, uh, what the issues are. We've clearly got the issues. I appreciate that. All right, so what else I'm, do you need? I'm going to relay those. I don't, I don't need anything else. Do you need anything else? Is there anything else you want me to do? We need you to meet these demands. Until then, anything you say means nothing. We want to join Because they were inside asking, and then they came outside. So apparently there's a miscommunication. There's, there's a miscommunication there. There, there seemed to be some indication there were some students inside right before you arrived that indicated they were looking for me. So that's part of why I'm standing here. Is there a security threat that barred you from allowing Muhammad Al Khur to speak here? This is a little bit complicated, so I'm going to ask you to let me finish what I'm saying before you interrupt or don't like what I'm saying. A um, couple things to know. One, uh, the security team does not make a decision. What we do is collect information, whether it's here at the university in prior roles in state government or with the city of Burlington. We collect information, we do what's called a threat assessment, a risk reward. What are the issues and risks associated with a particular event? So that's our role. Um, relative to the event itself, the university administration, a variety of folks, got together to make a decision about whether hosting at that particular time on campus was a good idea. So that's the nugget of what was decided. A um, couple additional things. We did not want to um, decline to host. What we actually offered the organizers on at least two occasions was to try to move the event because of the tensions that had grown both internationally, nationally, and regionally uh, in the days following October 7th. So there was a concerted effort not to quote unquote cancel, but to try to just move the event a little bit further away from that particular flashpoint in time. What did you offer to move it to? Uh, it was open-ended. Oh, no. So for somebody who books speaking I, events a year in advance, yes. you said, why don't we move it a few days, it knowing just, that he had a busy let, schedule, let me, knowing let me, that he would not be able to reschedule for another year. You knew this. When I started talking, I asked to be able to finish what I was talking about before you started yelling at me. So. OK, Dad. <laughs> 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 
That's ages. <laughs> this is genocide. She just called me dad. How do you want me to respond? Where are my pronouns are they then? Thank you. Let us finish. I lost my place. Um, right, moving. Um, relative to the specific intelligence that we used to, to create that threat assessment, we don't discuss that publicly. I know that is not satisfying. Yeah. No, it's not. What I can tell you is we have taken, one of the things we've changed just in the last couple of months is we have added a layer of transparency to that process. I specifically brief the other members of shared governance, the Student Government Association leadership, the Graduate Senate leadership, the Staff Council, and the Faculty Senate on the intelligence that was used to make that decision. The reason that it's done in that manner is because we can't share that kind of information publicly. That is the same methodology that is used in government, whether you're in state government and you are briefing legislators, you're in the federal government, you're briefing congressional official, officials, or you're in municipal government and you're briefing city councilors. That's the mechanism of representative government that creates an added level of transparency about the, the uh, facts upon which decisions are made. I realize that is not particularly satisfying. That is the mechanism we have. Yes, sir. Why can you have numerous cop car blockades for a pro-Israel vigil but not have those same resources for Palestinian students and Muhammad al-Kurds event? Why could you do that? So, so, why could you do that? Good question. So your event today was scheduled to be inside and the same... Not today, Muhammad. Why couldn't you give that to Muhammad? Biden well, spoke I, I, in the same venue. Sorry, I thought you were having you had two, different, uh, two different questions. Um, there's a different analysis of the types of events that happen. Why did it keep Palestinian? That's why. Because he's brown. No, it doesn't have anything to do with it. Folks, I can't. Well, you know, I can't. Uh, I didn't send an email. To, oh, yes, I did send an email. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's important now. All right. Well, I know, I know what my email said. I wrote it, so you don't have to read it to me. I want to hear it. I want to hear the email. I think we could all send an email. I'm just, we're trying, I'm trying to provide context for you to understand what you're saying. Four days in advance of the event. All right. Okay. And, and if you could just do the highlights, because I do have another meeting that you have to go to at some point. There is another genocide. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Our campus leadership and safety teams have been working carefully with various offices on campus as well as community law enforcement partners to consider whether and how the university can meet responsibility to host this event. It is our judgment based on global, national, and local events that we cannot adequately provide safety and security for this event as it is currently planned. We have, uh, they considered alternate venues on campus, like, and, but they determined that they could not be secured with the limited public safety resources we there are no such for the Israeli rally. You had those resources then. There's Unfortunately, a... there are no such there are no such venues there on campus where this could be hosted at that point. Yeah, additionally, our uh, safety yeah, and security yeah, concerns yeah, extend yeah, beyond yeah, the date yeah, of the event to secondary impacts for campus affiliates that are foreseeable. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Thanks. Are you worried about Palestinian students? Are you worried about Palestinians? No, the opposite. Okay. Okay. We, we were concerned and remain concerned through now, of course, um, that our Palestinian students could be disproportionately targeted by folks who were had their so why attention did you say on that, that event. I haven't said yet. Why was that clearly? Did you receive concerns from a single Palestinian student that, that holding this that event would put them in danger? Exactly. They 
I'm not going to discuss intelligence. That's a no. Did you communicate intelligence? That is, that is not a no. The organizers of the lecture. are invisible. Their writers are invisible. That is the extension of ethnic cleansing, and that's how colleges and educated people do it. Yeah. That way. That way. With credibility. I've given you. Wait, can I finish the email? I'm so sorry. There, I, I, you can, but I've given you all the all information right. I can there, provide on that topic. Therefore, the event will not be held on UVM's campus. We have notified University Event Services of this decision and, and will notify our campus community as well. So, my so I so I guess the question is, why did you say you don't forcibly cancel events when this is what literally what you said? To me? We don't what? You said you don't. You didn't cancel the event. You provided you the safety team provides information. We're, we're parsing words. Cancellation is fine. I prefer to look at it as we offered alternatives to host the event and they were declined. And it turned into a, a, a what I would refer to as an inability to host at that particular time. We weren't saying we don't want to host ever. Are you aware of... Another question. How many weeks is the administration is going to take on waiting on genocide in Gaza before we get a letter in our inbox. How many days do you have to discuss that before we get a letter in our inbox? You know I don't have the answer to that question, so I'm going to take that information back to uh, the administrator. Please do. Please do. Oh, I have a specific question about the email. And genocide with your silence. I can take two more, and I appreciate the fact that this has turned into a, an My actual dialogue, so thank you. about the email is, so if your intentions were, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, if your intentions were initially canceling the event out of the safety and concern for Palestinian students, why was that not um, explicitly stated as the reason for the cancellation of the event? And why is it that um, you guys didn't read over the email and think that, oh, if this is our clear message, um, maybe the message we're sending out sounds as though we're trying to um, silence Palestinian voices so, and speaking here at, at this university. It's a great oh, question. Okay. Against, hold on just a second. I'm going to go out on a limb and answer a question I would not normally answer. Um, n not for a nefarious reason, but um, the reason we did not specifically name that and sort of wrote it as a read between the lines is naming it at the time actually potentially paints a target on Palestinian students' backs. So we were trying not to elevate the profile in a way that would allow the concerns we had to actually play out. It is a, it's a complicated... I can't... Uh, why didn't you ask, ask Palestinians on campus to... Why did you make this decision? We were at the table for way? these discussions. Shame. 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 Students of okay. Palestinian okay. descent cleansing them. Telling you how Shame. they felt. Shame. Um, were you similarly concerned it's for, for students when addressing the, the events on was it October 7th? Were you similarly concerned for Palestinians are not mythical creatures. They exist. I'm not sure I understand. You were just saying there was no, knew. we didn't have an event here that was related to that. No, but uh, in general, you are saying that uh, you didn't really address the, the topic also because you didn't want to paint a target on Palestinian students' backs. I didn't want to call out hmm. Palestinian students specifically in that, in the email related to the El Kurd event. We didn't, want to call, we didn't want to call anyone specifically out as protecting them because that in and of itself, and it, you, you, you all watch what plays out in the 21st century in terms of violence in the United States. So you know this as well as I do, that when you paint a target, well, come back on their when, folks, why don't you call I'm talking about your parents. safety right let now. If you could let Shame. me finish. Shame. 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 Michael Sherling must go. Michael Sherling must go. I will. Michael Sherling must go. Michael Sherling must go. Just that's it. satisfy us by sending their head cop out here to say a few fluttery words, they're wrong.
And we made it very clear just now that his words don't mean a damn thing until our demands are met. We don't want a conversation. We don't want a dialogue. We want UVM to protect Palestinian students through our demands and divest their funding that they give to Israel. that they can't PR talk us away. We are going to keep coming out, we are going to stay here, we are going to keep raising our voices until through to the end of our demands being met. talk to us. Bullshit. 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 We, again, we are not here for a civil dialogue or engagement or a friendly conversation. We are here to demand what we want. And what we want is the protection of Palestinian students through our demands and the divestment from Israel.
water. True. There's cups up here. You got more cups? Hi, yo. So, can you tell me who we're here with today? Yeah, um, I'm here with uh, the Union of Students, the EVM Union of Students. I'm here with SJP as well. Yeah, same here. Union of Students and SJP. And Students for Justice in Palestine. SJP. Oh, also the, yep, that's SJP. Also the, yeah, the Union, Union of Students. We said Union of Students. Yeah. UVM Us. UVM Woods. UVM us. Yeah. Give us. Us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I take that. Yeah. And what happened here today? What what did y'all get up to today? Um so I guess we gotta give the context right that uh this is Wednesday and on Saturday the twenty fifth of November. Twenty twenty three. Good good thing to know. Uh there was three students, one went to Brown, one went to Trinity, one went to Haverford, who got uh, shot up on North Prospect Street. All three were Palestinian, all three were about 20 years, or they all three were 20 years old, all speaking Arabic, all wearing Palestinian kafirs. Uh Shot by a guy, Joseph. Jason. Jason J, not P. Jason James Eaton, I want to say. Damn, nice call back, or nice call, fucking. Um, <laughs> So to protest that and to protest the university, um, like making an air or an environment that like led that to happen, that, that allowed that to happen, um, UVM US with the aid of uh, SJP um, organized a die-in here today at Waterman, um, which is currently ongoing and I think it will be ongoing for another about hour, hour and a half. Do you want to talk about maybe the rally as well? Yeah, so we started with a rally in the first floor of the Davis Center, and that was intense. That was wild. That was might be the largest thing I've ever seen in the Davis Center happen, yeah, just by was, sheer volume of people like watching and chanting. Nobody was and getting through. It was. We shut down the Davis Center for like twenty minutes. I would say. I would say. The entire fucking Davis Center. Oops, yeah. sorry. Uh, oh, we're we're free. Fuck. <laughs> so then. So then we marched. That was a lot. We had some rally. We had some speeches. We had. Uh, we read a statement that one of the survivors, Hisham, gave to Brown University's SJP. chapter of SJP, and was read and was said at by Brown and SJP at Brown's vigil. Hisham, who is still currently, I think, posted up. In yeah. For spinal cord surgery soon. In the in the medical center, uh, what uh, half a mile away? If that, yeah. 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 So that's so then we so we chanted, we gave we gave speeches. There they were great and then we started marching over to Waterman and that's where we had a, shit we had happens. A big bullhorn that did not work. Um thank you migrant justice. <laughs> I do actually like yeah, those migrant justice, justice the migrant justice megaphones, you always got to double check them cuz they run out of yeah, yeah, they run out of batteries. They get beat up a lot. They go all over the place. That would be so nice. Um, I got a couple questions, more specific questions. So, um, how did the university relate to some random guy shooting three students who don't attend UVM? So the fundamental thing is that there is is the fundamental problem is that there is that there is a climate of bigotry, a climate of hatred and a climate of racism towards our Palestinian comrades and our Arab comrades who are and also who are not our comrades, who are just who are in Burlington, who are in the United States and who are in the world. Yeah. And that's because of. 
that's because of Zionist propaganda. That's because of that's because of polarization due to like due to everything. Yeah, and so that is, creates a climate where this shit becomes normal. Yeah, I was gonna say for some additional context of like concrete um, reasons the university is, is to be at fault here. Um, since October seventh, um, when uh, this the ongoing war began. Um, began uh uvm has consistently like uh, uh took and taken a stance against palestinians they initially like they had not released anything regarding palestinian students or death in palestine the first time the current president Suresh garamel said the word palestine in any formal communication was three days ago which is on like sunday or monday yeah which is give or take like 47, I think, days after um, the the initial attack. And then from there, beyond, like, uh, an over-policing and, and scrutiny of Palestinians and, and Palestine organizing, um, later, last month, we had uh, a talk by Mohammed al Kurd, uh, who was scheduled to speak here at the university on behalf of the English and the sociology department. Yeah. Sociology department. Justice Lecture Series, which has been going on for like 20 years. Yeah, sponsored by? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, they canceled, the university canceled that unilaterally. Sociology department was not consulted beforehand. English department was not consulted beforehand. Unilaterally, you understand In a situation where responsibility and, and undertaking of like an event or, or just anything um, falls into the hands of multiple people. Um, one group or one person uh, takes power and, without consulting, um, makes a decision that has not been agreed upon or discussed with others, um, which is what the administration did in regards to Mohammed al Kurd. Um, and then continue, they have sent out uh, emails to Palestine organizers. Um, claiming that uh, they are, are violent threats. Um, they have called like a, a real man, Wafiq. I forget his last name. I want to say. I'm not super sure. I'm so sorry, Wafiq. Love you, Wafiq. For, I think it's F A R R O U R, I'm pretty sure. He was on uh, Democracy Now! a couple days ago, which is crazy. That's so cool. Um, he is also but, the realist. Yeah, he's the realest guy in the world. Uh, they they have harassed him. They've called him violent, um, stuff like that. They're still, I mean, that, like invested in Israel, from my understanding, um, and and just generally within communications, they have created a, a kind of um, image that casts Palestinians and Palestine organizers and people who care about Palestine as like violent terrorists, um, along with the aid of not technically administration but very largely supported by the administration, uh, Hillel, and that is something that can be discussed another time, but, you know. Uh, so what was the goal of this die-in, specifically? That is a great question. Do you want to discuss vaguely, and then I'm going to pull up the demands on my phone? Yeah, so our goal for this, our goal for this action was to, was to kind of get, the, was to, Get the university to actually, to actually support Palestinian students, and get the university to, because until now it's been kind of hi is been hiding away, and it's been kind of ignoring uh, popular sentiment. And to get them to fucking get them to listen, get them to, get them to actually acknowledge our demands, get them to provide support for Palestinian students, get them to provide, get that, get them to support Palestinian events, get them to. Yeah. I have the list pulled up. Oh, beautiful. All right. Um, we got the demand list. Yep. So for this, uh, this action, we beforehand, to distribute to the crowd, made little uh, quarter sheets. Front and back and the back included our list of demands, which are as follows. Acknowledge Palestine and the suffering of Palestinians. Transparency in regards uh, to past and future canceled events and support with reorganizing them. Creation of a robust accountability system for Islamophobic and anti-Arab rhetoric um, for fac admin and faculty that engage in that. Um, commit to providing robust support services to Palestinian students, clarity on the canceling of the Mohammed al-Kurd lecture, committing to not canceling events held by organizers on campus, 
providing an open and accessible line for dialogue with student movements and divestment from all financial home holdings in Israel. And that was our demands, which we said once at the rally and then a couple times here at the Dayan. Yeah. Huh. 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 Uh. What are y'all most looking forward to in the remaining week and a half of this semester? Do you want to stand to like organize this or like you class, dude, you want. Um, in regards to organizing, it would be cool to see them cave to like a one demand. I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, at least not that soon. Um, I don't know. I'm excited to go back home. I miss being home. I miss getting lit in the city. Um, I want to get. I want to hit a drag show before another drag show before I leave. Yeah, Do you want to come? I'd love to. You want to come? Sure. Awesome. Is Green Mountain Cabaret doing? I. I mean, we can check. Oh, I think they might. I think they're doing a drag brunch. Oh yeah. The week uh, of or before nightmare. five. Is yeah, 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 yeah. That might be this Sunday. Oh f no! I think it's it's the following Sunday. Oh, sorry. It's the it's December tenth. Yeah. Sorry. All right. So it's the weekend before finals. Um, shout out Green Mountain Cabaret. They rock. Um, I don't know. I, I don't want to say anything about future actions, even though I, I trust this camera right now. This won't be going up till after. Oh, incredible. I think we're planning another action similar to this next week um, that is not fully fleshed out, and I'm not going to say anything that is not um, buckled down yet, so set in stone yet. I'm excited for that. Um, hopefully we can learn from this and then improve. I say that as if this is not still happening. Um, but I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see if they cave to a demand. Yeah. Uh, so my, so the thing I'm excited about is I'm excited about I'm ex fuck what the fuck what am I, uh, there's not too much to be excited about. I'm gonna be real. Finals are rough. Uh, Everything does kind of suck a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to keep holding UVM accountable. I'm excited to hang out with my friends who do great organizing shit and who are cool as fuck. I have something I'm excited for. If we can finish it in time, God willing, the next issue of The Gadfly. Read it. Read The Gadfly. If we ever fucking finish it. I think I, if, if, if we don't finish it by the end of the week, I will take it on myself to finish the formatting stuff and then, and then we're good. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, you go, uh, Javier, they, them. Uh, I was about to say your other fake name. Uh, <laughs> Juniper, they, she. Yeah, so. So. It's your non government name. Uh, what else do I have? Um. What's what's yeah. the ideal world look like for y'all in ten years? Fucking hell! In at UVM and Burlington or in the world? the world? Um, fucking I don't know, bro. Communism, like. The global revolution. <laughs> yeah, I don't think in ten years we're gonna be at the the final stage of class society or whatever. But um, I don't know. Uh, intent, ideal world. I mean, well, ideal world. Yeah, communism, man. I don't know. Fucking, I'm I'm chilling in like, back at home in Colombia, on a farm in a fucking commune is what my ideal world looks like. And everybody, you know, the 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 colonizers have been driven out of the global south, and I'm living my life, um, and everybody else lives theirs. Um, Peace and love and shit. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, s same goes here. Global communism. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in 10 years, man, I hope. I don't think that's happening in 10 years. To be no. clear, I don't think that's happening <laughs> in like 50 years. But. Uh, climate change. No, no climate change. No. Uh, let's, we're, let's go for it. All the, all the shit here. The no America. No climate change. No Israel. No state. No no. Ec no government. No border, no money. No, no border. No. Yeah. The full demands. Uh, no cars is cool. I like the K-trucks. I would defend the K-trucks. What the fuck is a K-truck? Oh, I have great news for you. 
They'd be a little like Jap. They're the little like oh, Japanese like mini. I get what you're saying. Those are the only trucks that'll be left over after the revolution. I can I can contend with that, but they got to be off road so we can destroy them. Damn roads. straight, yeah. Well, like we could have like people roads. Sidewalks. <laughs> God damn it. All right, that's that's my ideal world. Drag brunches. I do want to say, um, yeah, trans liberation as well. If we can get Juniper here a uterus, let's do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> so if you're watching this video in 10 years, yeah, you got to bu- you got to buy her a uterus. So I'd just like to say, uh, I had so much fun today and also the kafias don't necessarily do the best job at hiding your identity. <laughs> you have a bridge piercing. I do. I'd just like to say, and that is one of the only exposed places on the, right. and also your eyebrow piercing is visible and you're wearing the same glasses you wear I most days. I understand. Uh, maybe don't wear glasses at I future actions. See an eye person. Um, and you... <laughs> <laughs> And you just, I don't know. You don't have any distinctive stuff showing through it, but your hair is peeking out, both of you. I'm just going to critique your fashion. So a little quick roast session. Uh, you're identifiable. You're identifiable. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not put, I'm not going to put the super radical stuff in the, uh, the end of this. I'm going to cut out these last parts, and we'll save them for a general super cut of fun times with uh, the student organizers and all right maybe we'll be back in here next semester who knows something's going on something's going on let's walk downstairs now Um, is this actually coming somewhere? Um, I think it's disgusting that Suresh won't say that he is looking out for Palestinian students and that he's not treating it like a hate crime. And yeah, everyone should be mad about this. So, can you tell me who I'm speaking to today? Of course. Hello, my name is Wes. Um, My pronouns are uh, he, they, but I also go by any pronouns. Um, Yeah. Uh, So, you're at this protest today. That's pretty crazy. How did you find out about it? So, I've been keeping up with a lot of the protests um, and organizations here in Vermont um, since October 7th, October 11th. But even prior to that, I've been trying to get involved with a lot of like issues regarding climate. Um, there was a couple pre, uh, pro-Palestine protests I've attended in the past. Um, unfortunately, it didn't garner as enough attention um, as uh, current protests right now. But yeah, that was... Um, mostly overshadowed, I think, because of COVID um, and even Black Lives Matter, which I had also been attending. But at the same time, um, we are at a point where I believe that all of us are truly recognizing the importance of solidarity and the importance of organizing and that 
Palestinian problems are also our problems too. Um, yeah. Um. So we know the reason why this protest happened today is in large part because of the shooting of the three Palestinian men less than three blocks from where we are holding this protest. Um. What's your take on the way the media has been responding to it, and how do you think the media should be responding to this tragedy? I am, well, first of all, I don't believe um, this was already a pre-planned protest. Um, however, I have been extremely, uh, words cannot express how unbelievably disappointed I am, and I have been with the media um, I have seen plenty of news articles that uh, refuse to acknowledge that the three men were Palestinian. Um, they refuse to acknowledge that the crime was hate motivated. It is it fills me with rage every time um, people claim that this was not a hate crime because it is a legal definition and that requires further evidence and analysis. But my question is what further evidence and analysis needs to be conducted when these were three men who were wearing a kafia, they spoke Arabic, they were Palestinian, and the man who shot them was white, they were Christian, and they owned a gun. They owned a gun. Um, I have seen plenty of news articles that would talk about the shooter's previous accomplishment accomplishments. There was one article I saw that, um, discussed how he was a boy scout leader or how he, uh, was in wilderness therapy, interned at Harvard, um, worked on a farm, this, just this, how could this white Christian man with all this, um, skills and volunteering and, um, this, this great reputation, how could he ever do something like this? Well, I blame you. I blame the media. I blame the media for its propaganda. I blame UVM for censoring Mohammed El Kurd, um, for his vigil and speaking out. I blame uh, UVM Hillel for demonizing pro-Palestinian protests um, and calling them anti-Semitic without even giving us a platform to speak, without even listening to us. I blame um, the media for, and I blame uh, the ADL for recognizing Jewish voices for peace as um, anti-Semitic um, and numerous colleges that would shut them down, that they would prevent them from protesting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's obvious how this happened. It's obvious why this happened. Um, it's just blatant Islamophobia, Islamophobia and anti-Arab hate. So we've been seeing this whole targeted campaign to try and paint anything pro-Palestinian as anti-Semitic, even with explicitly Jewish groups who are saying that they don't want their Judaism to be the only thing that that can only be expressed as something tied to the nation of Israel. And so we're well aware of that. Um, and I appreciate you saying everything that you just said. When it comes down to it, do you think that having to call this a hate crime limits us if it is only a hate crime if it is legally considered a hate crime and you have to find that specific motivation where otherwise we can just see a crime with no apparent motivation and they're saying explicitly we can't find any motivation for this if it is a motiveless crime and he killed these men purely for the hell of it do you think that should be counted as a hate crime in of itself I believe as far as I'm aware that what I um, could collect from your question I believe it should still be counted as a hate crime regardless at the end of the day these were still three Palestinian men they were wearing a kafia, 
and they were speaking Arabic. Um, I, if the man claims that he just wanted to kill anyone, I'm. Oh. Yes. Because the specific phrase hate crime is a legal phrase. So maybe that is a limiting phrase if you can only call it that once it's legally hate crime. Yeah, it's limiting. Um, I, I don't necessarily blame him because it is his job to record it as a hate motivated. Mike Sherling, yes, we're referring to uh, Mike Sherling, head of security um, uh, and compliance for UVM. Um, and I believe that it was uh, well within his right to call it a hate-motivated crime as opposed to a hate crime because that is that, – that would be a blatant lie. Um, it is just personally extremely frustrating that um, – all the evidence is there as far as I'm aware that this could be classified as a hate crime and it is still um, – they are still – the police are still continuing to look for information to find – to figure out if this was actually a hate crime or not. So I feel the same frustrations as you and I see a lot of these things because uh, when people talk about crimes against Jewish people, it's very easy – to call it a hate crime because all you have to do is find them they are committing this crime because this person is jewish whereas if you don't say anything about the person's identity while you're committing the crime or you don't have anything that says you're prejudiced against this specific identity before you commit the crime then technically they won't classify that as a hate crime so we see a bunch of people openly express anti-semitic views but the majority of hate crimes against jewish people for many years have been non-violent crimes they've been robberies They've been vandalism. They've been harassment on the street. Very few actual like assaults or murders. And I'm Jewish myself. And I get extremely upset every time I hear about all of these things. But they are, it is an easily manipulated legal framework. And so I'm just as frustrated because he's saying we can't find any motivation, but it's a hate motivated crime, which means that it has to, they have to see a motivation that is hate so it's just they're doing backflips in front of us to try and avoid saying the word hate crime because they don't want to inflame the situation. We're already very upset. So I think we're fair to move on from this topic. What do you want to see happen, not just at UVM, but in this country at large in regards to Palestine? And then after this, I do have to go. Boycotts, divestment sanctions we need to divest um colleges uvm needs to divest from weapons and manufacturers that arm israel and you and personally i believe the united states and anywhere that isn't complacent with apartheid and genocide across the world we're seeing this in congo we're seeing this in sudan um we're not just seeing it in Palestine, but specifically regarding Palestine, we need to divest from Raytheon. We need to divest from Lockheed Martin. Um, and uh, we also need to divest from Sodexo. <laughs> I just been getting video of everybody who's been looking me on the side that I'm going to release.
flag for it. getting Travis shots right here.
If folks can gather by that banner, we'd love to talk and just take a quick photo after we're done. So if you can make your way towards the Jewish Solidarity Banner, that'd be awesome. Now it is my great honor and pleasure to introduce some new friends and siblings from Philadelphia. From the streets of Philly, Las Mariposas Galacticas. between our struggle and the struggle for Palestinian liberation. It is one struggle against imperialism. One struggle against colonialism. One struggle against the military industrial complex. Against racism. Against genocide. This is a turning point. We have always known that we are the majority, but this is the moment where we say, we are no longer afraid. That's right. The tactics are no longer working that are used to repress us. The propaganda, the doxing threats, the smear campaigns, the surveillance, we are no longer intimidated. We are not outnumbered. We are out-organized. And this is where we begin. Please raise your fists in the air and repeat after me. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Thank you. We will see a free Palestine within our lifetime. Shabbat 
shalom. My name is Ali Fisher, and I'm a queer Sicilian Ashkenazi Jew currently living on Abeniki land in Brattleboro, Vermont. The bombing of Palestine does nothing to make me feel safe as a Jew. I'm here to say, and have been saying, for as long as it needs to be said, end the occupation of Palestine. <laughs> I was raised in a household that didn't speak of Palestine. The Zionism in my Jewish community was not one of hatred, but of erasure. When I learned about Israel's occupation of Palestine in my early 20s, I was so heartbroken by the atrocities done in my name that I left Judaism. What brought me back to myself and my ancestors was learning that I could be both anti-Zionist and Jewish. <laughs> who practice traditions thousands of years old, including the practice of solidarity with others being persecuted. <laughs> According to the Jewish calendar, we are in the year 5784. Zionism was started less than 200 years ago, and Israel less than 75 years ago. Lador Vador, from generation to generation, means that we as anti-Zionist Jews are not breaking with our tradition, but caring for the work of Tikkun Olam, the fight for a just and healed world. We can see that the power of the Zionist narrative is waning globally, and I am so proud to be a member of Jewish Voice for Peace, fighting together for a free Palestine and an end to the occupation. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. My name is Naomi. I'm an artist and an herbalist. I live in Dummerston on the West River on the land of the Abenaki people. My grandparents met at a Hanukkah party in Basel, Switzerland, having escaped Kristallnacht and the Anschluss, the Nazi annexation of Austria. In Switzerland, neutral ground, no one attacked them, but neither were they allowed to work or make a life. They came here eventually after a decade in limbo my grandfather was a pediatrician. My grandmother worked as a docent at the art museum. And their pain was enormous my entire life. The artist's tasks are many, including to tell a truth. One truth, my grandparents did not survive extermination for me to export their pain onto other marginalized people. That's right. <laughs> is mine to metabolize, and I will never consent for it to be leveraged to justify the terror of another. <laughs> what was done to us should end with us and never be reproduced. Right. What was done to us should end with us and never be reproduced. That's right. In Olam Haba, in the world to come, there will be artists. May the artists tell stories of justice. May Palestine live long and make art. And may we Jews in diaspora support Palestinian freedom and flourishing. We all deserve to live to see the world to come. Perhaps I can be even more explicit. I see all around me a large gathering of Vermonters, Palestinians and Jews and allies. And we demand an immediate ceasefire a halt to all U.S. military aid to Israel and yes. an end to the occupation because Palestine will be <laughs> Next, we have a statement from Vibrant Justice. Before I read it, I want to raise the chant. From Palestine to Mexico, apartheid walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, apartheid walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, apartheid walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, apartheid walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, apartheid walls have got to go. All right.
Here's a statement from Migrant Justice. They would have been here today, but they're having an organizing meeting because they're waging a multi-year campaign to get Hannaford Supermarket, which is owned by a multinational corporation, to join Milk with Dignity. When they march, when they march on Hannaford, I want to see all of you there on that march. Because Hannaford is doing an injustice to the people who work on the farms and in the fields of Vermont. Our milk comes from sweated labor, undocumented labor that are kept as second class citizens in our state, and we will not stand for it. So we are going to go out. Every time Migrant Justice calls for a march on Hannaford, everybody should turn out. So here's their statement that they sent to us. Migrant Justice is with the people of Palestine. The voice of our community calls out to resist. We are united in our demand for a ceasefire. Stop the genocide. The lust for power oppresses our people. This system controls and oppresses us using destruction as a tactic, squeezing every resource out of us from our bodies. It takes the money from our pockets to build walls and divisions to make weapons, to train officers that commit violence on our communities, to kill us when we disobey, to frighten us, to silence us. Enough death, enough denial. We demand freedom. Freedom for Palestine. Freedom from the bloody hands of our oppressors. Freedom for our people. We are with you, Palestine. We plead with you, Palestine. We resist with you, Palestine. <laughs> From Palestine to Mexico. From Palestine to Mexico. From Palestine to Mexico. Thank you. Next, I'd like to bring up some of our union folks. From Ben and Jerry Scoopers United Union, Rebecca Mendelson, and from AFSCME 1674, Amanda Calder. Where are you from? What do you? What group do you want? Good afternoon. My name is Amanda Calder. I'm a direct support professional at Howard Center. Well, uh, Members of my union, AFSCME Local 1674, voted to endorse this march in solidarity with Palestinians. Yeah. As human services workers, we come from all backgrounds of our community, and we serve members from all backgrounds in our community. We care for our clients, their families, our communities, and each other every day. Every day we see the lifelong impacts that trauma has on people, including from oh, wars, and from living in a society that puts profits that. before people, oh. divides and oppresses us based on things like class, race, religion, disability, gender, sexuality, language, national origin, a society that produces poverty, wages, billionaires, climate change, wars like this, and a housing crisis that leaves many of us without an affordable or decent place to live. We and other human services workers from around the world, including in Palestine and Israel, stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people in their fight for freedom and dignity and for their human rights to be respected. We mourn for all of the dead in this conflict, and as the saying goes, we must fight like hell for the living. The only way to have short and long-term security and peace and justice in Palestine and Israel is for everyone's rights to be honored and respected, no, except, no exceptions. Never again means never again for anyone. <laughs> Genocide is always a false solution that pits people against each other. It's about taking, getting rid of a people in order to take their resources and get, help the rich get richer. And you see that with the companies making money off of this. We must oppose all genocides and all oppressions wherever we find them. As some of you may know, the Palestinian trade unions issued a solidarity call 
calling on unions and all people around the world to end all forms of complicity of Israel's crimes, including the arms trade. In addition to the longshore workers in the U.S., there are workers, unions in Belgium and Italy committed to not transporting arms to Italy, and there are workers in the U.K. also protesting at um, weapons manufacturers there. campaign have reiterated their calls for those companies to cancel Project Nimbus, a $1.2 billion cloud computing contract with the Israeli military providing advanced AI tools. The Alphabet Workers Union and Amazon Labor Union support their campaign. Solidarity statement as well as um, at AFT locals and the National Writers Union. These are all the ones I could find online last night. And I recommend people look up the Starbucks Workers United statement. Unfortunately, Starbucks has opted to continue its union busting by suing the union for its statement, which is <laughs> So today I'm standing in solidarity with solid Starbucks workers as well. When workers are united, we'll never be defeated and millions of dollars that we should be using for our needs here and for humanitarian aid for Palestinians are being spent on wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and to countries like Saudi Arabia and Israel with more weapons to hurt more people and dispossess people of their land. President Biden, Senator Sanders, Senator Welch, and Representative Ballant push as hard as you can for a full ceasefire, humanitarian aid, hold Israel accountable for its violations of international law, and stop all U.S. military aid to Israel. Excuse me again, is it just recording or <laughs> trying to get the soup? <laughs> yeah, get that soup, get that steam. <laughs> What's in the soup? Uh, veggies and coconut milk and What's the big stuff? no okay. gluten. Um, <laughs> yeah. What's that big chunk? I don't know, dude. That is. No. It's some cool it root like vegetable. Tofu. It's a, it's like a, it's a D something. It's, I'm trying not to say daikon. Wait, I'm going to ask Good. somebody. I'll go ask for Reed. Oh, nice. Jack, okay. It's a jackfruit. Can I borrow the knife real quick? You're going to kill me, bro. Is this strong enough for this or not? No. <laughs> Your cleaver's better for that. Just sit on the really? window. Can I borrow your cleaver really quick? Like that? Like that? Thank you. 
same fight for what is right. This is a fight we have to fight for what is right. Yes. So I'm going to hold you here. <laughs> join, join an organization, get involved, and if you feel alone and hopeless this is about this genocide, you will find community and join an organization. Hope, not by despair alone, but by coming together with these people who are all around you right here who want to do something about it. Let's together and organize here when we say that PSL, that we are leaders of the fight to save the world. That we also say that you have to dare to struggle to win. And we also say, hey, hey, ho, ho, capitalism has got to go. Yeah. And we also say, change is going to come. And we say, oppressed people all over the world unite. And we also say, finally, free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Thank you, everybody. سويا حتى يرفع شبلا من اشبالنا او زهرة من زهراتنا عالم فلسطين
Just a quick, these people are incredible. Give them a big round of applause. Their next song is the anthem of the Italian workers' movement in fighting fascism. Bella Ciao!
see it on their feed or see it on their stories or talk about it or even think about it. There has never been peace. It's not a dispute about land. It's about if Palestinians have the right to exist. Thank you. And I just wanna thank again the sponsors so much uh, for helping with this event. I'm just gonna go ahead and list them, give a shout after each one. I wanna thank Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. Yeah. UVM Students for Justice in Palestine. Yeah. Jewish Voice for Peace, Vermont, New Hampshire. Yeah. The Howard Center Union. Yeah. AFSME 1674. Yeah. Migrant Justice. Yeah. Free Her Vermont. Yeah. The Tempest Collective. Champlain Valley Democratic Socialists of America. Woo! UVM Young Democratic Socialists of America. Woo! Party for Socialism and Liberation. Woo! The Will Miller Social Justice Lecture Series. Woo! People's Kitchen. Woo! Education Justice Coalition. Woo! Ben and Jerry Scoopers United Union. Woo! Rural Vermont. Vermont, Woo! Code Pink, Woo! Vermont Peace and Anti-War Coalition, Woo! Safe Landing BTV, Woo! the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, Woo! Green Mountain Veterans for Peace, Woo! the Vermont Communist Party USA, Woo! St. Michael's College Diversity Coalition, Woo! Burlington Tenants United, Vermont Workers Center, and last but not least, the UVM Union of Students. Thanks for coming out, and another reminder that we have a bucket for donations to pay for this rally, and we really appreciate the support as it took a lot of organizing to get this together. The donation bucket is at the coalition table. All right. Netanyahu, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Netanyahu, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Netanyahu, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Netanyahu, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Netanyahu, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Netanyahu, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. All right, now we're gonna start our second round of speakers. And just a quick announcement, um, someone lost a phone, so if you're missing one, please come claim it. We'll probably leave it at the coalition table. And also, um, Last Mary Post's Galacticas is playing tonight at 8 p.m. at the Labor Hall in Barrie. If you want to see them again, keep the support going. And let's get into our speakers. So I am so grateful to introduce our first speaker from Burlington Tenants United, April Fisher. To know her is to love her. So April, where are you? Oh, She went to work. April had to leave for work. Is there anyone else from Burlington Tenants United who would like to speak? Or we'll just move on to People's Kitchen. Okay, let's move on to People's Kitchen. From People's Kitchen, we have Fareed Munrasa. Come on up. I'm not free, but Fareed is great. He's making more food for everybody. Yeah. Right. Sorry, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Noor El Nabulsi and I'm a Palestinian American living here in Burlington, Vermont on unceded Abenaki land. It's funny how the homeland of my family was taken away so that I now have to occupy another indigenous land. The farmlands of my family were ripped from their hands, so now I have to farm on unceded Abenaki land. It's almost like these colonial powers planned it this way or something. I'm here also as an organizer with the People's Kitchen and the People's Farm Stand. 
We show our love, we show our solidarity through food and vegetables. If you come to us, we don't care who you are, you will be fed. We reject the notion that value is determined through wealth, race, and other capitalist notions. We want to show out all of our neighbors, our refugee neighbors, our neighbors of color, our houseless neighbors, our queer neighbors, that you are welcome here and you are loved. And that's how I found the People's Kitchen in the first place. As a Palestinian, I felt alone and out of place my entire life. Growing up, I didn't want to be different. I didn't want to be Muslim. I didn't want my family to be attacked because the media labeled my people as backwards, as savages, as terrorists. I even went by my middle name up until a few years ago because I was so afraid of embracing who I am. So to my white allies, if you're feeling sick, fatigued, and depressed by this genocide, welcome to the show. Yeah. For people of color, my black and brown and indigenous siblings, this is our baseline. That's right. And I don't say this to guilt trip you all, not in the slightest. I say this because you all saved me. Black Lives Matter Burlington, the, the People's Kitchen, Justicia Migrante, rural Vermont, and now Jewish Voices for Peace, you all saved me. Wafiq, Abi, ana bahabbik. Ma'kul albi, yislamu yidek. But please don't leave me. Do not leave us ever again. Even if the ceasefire comes tomorrow, please do not leave us alone. Palestinian children fight for their lives every single day, and we need you to keep the fight with us and end the apartheid, which is the root cause of this nightmare. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you so much for such an amazing statement. So next we have the Champlain Valley Democratic Socialists of America, um, Antonio Golan. Hello everyone, my name is Antonio Galan, I'm speaking on behalf of Ch Champlain Valley DSA, the local Democratic Socialists of America chapter. Uh, I'm here to say on behalf of all of us that we stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people at this time and, and in the future. And I also want to kind of take this moment to emphasize something that's already been said a few times. Uh, and emphasize the, the parallels between the foundation of the State of Israel and the foundation of the United States. Both are colonial, colonial settler uh, states. Both are predicated on the removal and genocide of the indigenous people. And what Israel is doing today in Palestine is what the United States has historically done to native populations. <laughs> And, and I emphasize this to, to sort of remind us, remind everyone, that while we're told this, this conflict is complicated, it is anything but. It is actually quite straightforward, as straightforward as any political issue could possibly be. Thank you.
some of it good. I heard they, they actually did get the speed back, like it's probably camcorder. Yeah, we found it all, but Bobby's here. Yeah, yeah, I saw him. I caught him. Look at that, look at that shoulder. He used to be running up.
park right here.
if she does not promise tonight that she will vote against any funding of this genocide, it is unacceptable. We only want one answer. No to funding, no to genocide. What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! What do we When do we want it? Now! Not another nickel! Not another dime! No more money for Israel's crimes! Not another nickel! Not another dime! No more money for Israel's crimes! Not another nickel! Not another dime! No more money for Israel's crimes! Not another nickel! Not another dime! No more money for Israel's crimes! We charge you with genocide! We charge you with genocide! We charge by the violence, the militarization, the heedless treatment of human life. I am in shock of how grief is weaponized. I am heartbroken about the atrocious carpet bombings under the Israeli military that they are conducting on pediatric cancer wards, with children dying with limbs crushed, stuck under buildings. To this, I say, not in my name. <laughs> I am pushing back on the narrative that this means I am not also heartbroken about the Israeli people who died on October 7th. To that also, my heart breaks. I am not standing for terrorism and pain of any kind, and humanity respects humanity. Of course, all life is sacred. Any child killed is unacceptable. I am also heartbroken, and I will not overlook the oppressive apartheid conditions that have existed long before the current extreme violence. <laughs> to all of this, I say, not in my name. <laughs> we see through that bullshit. I stand here as a mother. Every day, the more I see small children bagged, parents bent and crying above them. I say, not in my name. Every day I see fathers digging under the rubble, rubble of exploded hospitals, searching for the buried, and to this I say, not in my name. 
Jewish theology teaches me that every person is B'Tselem Elohim, made in the image of God. That to save one life is to save the entire world. That the most critical piece of our whole tradition is to treat each other as we long to be treated. My grief for all the humanity is in no way in conflict, regardless of what side of a border wall a person happened to be born on. My grief is about the violence that is taking human life. And this overwhelming horror and grief as a mother, as a human, is in fact compounded by my religion being used to justify an ongoing continuation of genocidal violence. The small, still voice inside me says, whatever safety will come, this is not it. Whatever the path of peace, this does not lead there. Stanley Kunitz says it in his poem, The Testing Tree, in a murderous time, the heart breaks and breaks and lives by breaking. I pray to keep my heart breaking, to stay soft enough to be aware to what is happening, to never numb out. And as an American taxpayer, we are all implicated. As Jewish people who are being told that this violence is being done to keep us safe, let us all say, not in our name. In Judaism, we say in the Psalms, Ve'ani tefilati, which translate to, I am my prayer. Our lives matter. Our choices add up to create a culture which will either allow or put an end to what is happening in Palestine. We can end this, and we will end this. We are all free when we are all free. We are all safe when we are all safe. We will stand for safety, a safety that moves us beyond borders to solidarity, to care and love. And now I'm going to make you all sing a song. It goes like this. I'm gonna sing the whole thing, it's really easy. And then y'all are gonna sing with me and you can sing it while you're marching if you want, okay? It goes like this. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And the second part goes, we are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. It's kind of low, I'm gonna take it up. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the we are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. First part. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting for. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. One more time, join in. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones we've been waiting. Say with me, not in our name. Not in our name. Thanks so much, Grace. I just want to tell a quick story that makes this very real. One of my best friends who um, was in, in a graduate program in Britain, one of her best friends was from Gaza. And she just heard yesterday that he and his entire family was killed by an Israeli bomb. And then when his brothers went to dig his body out of the rubble, Israel bombed and killed them. That is the reality of what the state of Israel with the full backing of the US government with guns, money, arms, everything is doing in Palestine. That's why our chant is so important. Never again is now. 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 
All right, next up we have Joe from Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. Please give it up to Joe. Hi, everyone. I don't view this as a pro-Palestine rally. I view this as an anti-colonialist rally. I also don't view this as an anti-war demonstration because wars are not genocides and genocides are not wars. From Nat Turner's rebellion in 1831 to the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising in 1943, history has shown that people who don't have alternatives will eventually resort to violence. The UN codifies this right to resistance for colonized people, and Joe Biden, of all people, in the 1980s was supportive of this right to armed resistance of the people in South Africa, saying, quote, Damn it, we have favorites in South Africa. Our favorites are the people who are being repressed by that ugly white regime. The only thing left to avail them of that repulsive, repugnant regime of Afrikaners is to take up arms. They've tried everything over the past 20 years. They've begged, they've borrowed, they've crawled, and now they're taking up arms. Likewise, Palestinians, Red Gandhi, and Martin Luther King, they demonstrated peacefully with the Great Right of Return March of Return in 2018-2019 and were met with violence and silence for doing that. Nobody questions the right of Algeria to be free, of Peru to be free, of India to be free, of European colonialism despite armed resistance during the struggle for liberation. Nora Erekat, human rights attorney, says that Israel has no more right to self-defense then does Portugal in Mozambique or Angola. Shit. Bosnian resistance to Serb aggression was used to justify the massacre in Srebrenica in the 1990s, just as resistance on October 7th is being used to justify the current ethnic cleansing process. Shit. Shit. And the Zionist lobby is not asked to condemn pogroms such as what happened in Huara earlier this year, or any other atrocities committed by Israel, and yet everyone who speaks on this issue in defense of human rights feels pressure to condemn what happened on October 7th. William Lloyd Garrison and the abolitionists refused to condemn what Nat Turner and, and his associates did in 1831. They asked instead, what did you expect to happen when you treat people that way? Holocaust survivor Dr. Gabor Mate says liars in the Israeli army would teach lessons to Joseph Goebbels. As Chris Hedges puts it, Israel is built on lies. The lie that Israel wants peace. The lie that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. The lie that Israel is a pillar of Western civilization in a sea of barbarism. Children killed by Israelis become children caught in crossfire. The bombing of residential districts becomes surgi a surgical strike on a bomb-making factory. The destruction of Palestinian homes becomes the demolition of homes of terrorists. Even attacks on hospitals are justified this way. Israel has targeted medical facilities since the 1980s and has lied about it consistently. Goebbels would be impressed that the system of tunnels, the tunnel economy, that emerged in Gaza since the 2006 siege started is not viewed as a result of the brutality of the siege, but rather the barbarism of the poor brown people living in Gaza. Goebbels might be impressed that the Zionist lobby succeeded in canceling the Will Miller lecture last month, that they were able to get away with killing reporter Shireen Abu Akleh, and that they continued to lie about it until video emerged disputing what happened, contradicting what they said happened, and by the time the video had emerged, her murder was all but forgotten. Israel refuses to cooperate with the International Criminal Court, the UN Human Rights Council. It revoked the visa of the Director of Human Rights Watch. Jimmy Carter was there for the elections in 2005-06. The Carter Center oversaw the elections and deemed them to be free and fair. 
He also has emphasized for decades that Hamas has sought peace. Hamas, the Arab League, Iran have all been willing, very willing, to come to the table with 1967 borders and a 10-day negotiating window for right of return. Hamas is not the terrorist organization that the propagandists would have you believe. And in fact, Bernie Sanders says that categorically a ceasefire is impossible because Hamas is a terrorist organization committed to the destruction of the Israeli people. In evaluating whether the Zionists or the Nazis were better propagandists, Goebbels might point out that the Zionists have big advantage that the Nazis didn't, such as the emergence of the military industrial complex. Bernie Sanders justifies the F-35s training to drop bombs in Palestine. They've actually dropped more bombs already there than the munition load in Hiroshima and Nagasaki just in the past month. And Bernie Sanders, Democratic Socialist Bernie Sanders justifies that as a jobs program. Would Goebbels be dumbfounded to hear that there are anti-boycott, divestment, and sanction legislation on the books in 35 states, and a speech pathologist in Texas was denied a contract for refusing to sign a pro-Israel anti-BDS loyalty pledge in 2018? And we all know that professional consequences have only increased since then. There have been a doxing campaign and do not hire lists coming from eminent Ivy League universities just in the past month. The current acceleration of the ethnic cleansing process is a phase that all settler colonial re regimes face when they have to decide whether to pull back or whether to try to, for once and all, for all, wipe out the indigenous population. And they are choosing to try to drive Gazans to Sinai and those from the West Bank into Jordan. How would Goebbels feel about Rashida Tlaib, the only Palestinian congresswoman, being censured yesterday? Perhaps he would be surprised she's allowed in Congress at all. And what would Goebbels make of Jeremy Corbyn being ousted from the British Labour Party? Or Norman Finkelstein, Jewish scholar whose, whose parents were killed in the Holocaust, being slandered as an anti-Semite. Israeli historian Ilan Pape says that Zionism is not a liberation movement. It is not a nationalist movement, it is a racist movement. Well-known Jews as far back as Albert Einstein have said that the Zionist movement is a political project closely akin in its organization, methods, political philosophy, to the social appeal of the Nazi and fascist parties. It will be remembered that way. Dr. Gabor Mate, a Holocaust survivor himself and former Zionist, says we created this beautiful dream, but we imposed a nightmare on someone else. I visited the occupied territories in the 1980s and cried every day for two weeks at what I saw. The brutality of the occupation, the petty harassment, the murderousness of it, the cutting down of Palestinian olive groves, the denial of water rights, the humiliation. And this went on and is much worse now than it was then. It's the longest ethnic cleansing operation in the 20th and 21st centuries and it's still going on. And it's gotta stop. And yet, Becca Balin, your representative, tweeted that the attacks on October 7th were unprovoked. <laughs> Becca Balin is hosting a fundraiser two blocks from here, and at this point, we're gonna move the rally there and let her know. <laughs> so we're gonna follow this banner, and we're gonna chant following Ashley's lead. Three. Free, free Palestine! 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 Long live Palestine!
people of Gaza. What it is, a genocide being committed in our name and on our time. We are calling on you to support a ceasefire and show the world that there is another option besides an endless cycle of bombing, airstrikes, rocket invasions, settler colonialism, and ethnic cleansing. We are
to turn out for sit-ins, mass actions, marches, protests, everything we can do to stop this damn genocide. <laughs>
go fuck off. Go fuck off. Just go fuck off. December 2nd, um, Saturday, 2023, I believe is the year. Um, we are out here at um, the Montpelier State House, Vermont State House. Uh, we're going to be holding a rally um, in solidarity of Palestine. Whee! It's the Vermont Coalition for the Liberation of Palestine. I think that's that's who, who this is. Switch Liberation in Palestine. Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation? Okay. I wasn't at the first organizing meeting. I don't remember the acronym. That's what we're doing. It um, big old building, real pretty. Sadly, yeah. Yep. Yep. I've been having the fucking. My card, uh, uh, I have.
I'm April Fisher. And what's going on today, April Fisher? So today is a statewide gathering in solidarity with Palestine. Um, there are a number of organizations here represented today. Um, Vermonters for Justice in Palestine, Jewish Voice for Peace, um, the Party for Socialism and Liberation, and all of these groups have come together as the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation. And um, we're here to speak to our representatives and the people of Vermont that we stand uh, in solidarity with the people of Palestine and we are calling for a ceasefire um, and an end to the genocide happening in Palestine. What are you expecting from this event today? Um, well, personally, as a Jewish anti-Zionist, I'm trying to get my voice out there, make it clear to the world that um, Zionism does not represent Jewish values, and, um, <coughs> and uh, Jewish people of Vermont are not going to stand for having a genocide happen in our name. Um, and so that's my personal goal for speaking out at this rally today. Uh, what are you most looking forward to at this rally today? Um, well, it's beautiful seeing folks from all across the state gather here. A lot of familiar faces. Um, I think it's great that this issue is bringing together all of us. Um, you know, it's a very heavy, dark time right now, um, filled with a lot of tragedy. Hello! And that's why, but you know, this event is bringing us together today, as we see happening right now. Um, how does it feel to be Travis? It feels, I mean, it feels all right to be me. Um, but here today, I mean, I don't know, I like, I don't know. I don't really know what like I can do being like halfway across the world. So like I like approach the space being in like mourning and being like, all right, like what steps can I take to 
to impact a situation that is is dire. Like it's a dire situation. So I don't know. Yeah. How does it feel to be April? Good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. Yeah, it's 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 feeling good. I feel like I'm purposeful being here. I'm like I was telling Malak, like I'm here to speak out as an anti-Zionist Jew, make it clear that um, this genocide is not condoned by Jewish people and won't happen in our name. Facts. Um. A lot of interviews, a lot of big things coming. Big uh, rally. Turn the camera around, show the rally. More people getting here every minute. I heard it might be up to 500 or 1,000 people here today. Good, how are you? All right. Long live Palestine. Ceasefire. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Ceasefire. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Ceasefire. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Ceasefire. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Ceasefire. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Ceasefire. When do we want it? Now. My name's Ashley Smith. I'm going to be one of the MCs for today. I'm a member of the Tempest Collective and the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation. Welcome to our statewide rally to free Palestine and stop Israel's genocidal war on Gaza. We rally today in the shadow of a hate crime in our state. A racist bigot shot three Palestinian students in Burlington. Hisham Awartani, Kinan Abdel Hamid, and Tassin Ahmed. We rally in the shadow of Israel, restarting its genocidal bombing campaign in Gaza. We rally in the shadow of a political establishment united in support of Israel. Through the Biden administration, the U.S. is supporting funding, arming, and advising Israel to carry out the collective punishment and ethnic cleansing of Gaza. Nothing less than an attempt at a second Nakba. Today, we stand with Palestinians, with their resistance, with their struggle for liberation from occupation, from sieges, and apartheid. We rally with the whole world that supports Palestinians, from Burlington to Barcelona, from Jakarta to Johannesburg, from Santiago to Cairo, the whole world stands with Palestine. And you know what? We are the majority in this country. 80% of Democrats are for an immediate ceasefire. 66% of people overall are for an immediate ceasefire. And more and more people are joining us every day. The United Auto just Workers like Union days, just, so just yesterday announced that they are calling for an immediate ceasefire. The labor movement is rallying for Palestine. And we are scoring victories. Even though the political establishment is united on, our, on their side, our side is splitting them. Our struggle forced Becca Ballant to come out for a ceasefire. that opposes a ceasefire is Bernie Sanders. We are here today to tell Bernie to change his position. Get with the majority of this country. Get with the majority of people in the Democratic Party. Get with the majority of the world. Call for an immediate ceasefire, a permanent ceasefire in this genocidal war. In our hundreds, in our thousands, in our millions all around the world, we're marching with Palestinians. The world is with Palestine.
Today, we are not going to have a march because out of respect for people in Montpelier, Barrie, and this area who've suffered a climate disaster, we are gonna be rallying here today out of respect for them. But we are gonna raise our voices in solidarity with them. We need money for climate relief. We need money for jobs. We need money for education, not for war and occupation. We're encouraging everybody to wear masks so that this is a disability friendly environment and people won't be subject to COVID. We're still living in a pandemic. So we encourage people to mask up if they can. And we also have food from the People's Kitchen. Everybody give a cheer to the People's Kitchen. We also have a medic's tent. If you want hand warmers, if you want tinctures, if you want anything that can help you stay warm and riled up at this rally, go over to the medic's tent. Before we get started with our program, I wanted to bring up Noor to lead us in an Arabic chant for Palestine. <laughs> Repeat after me. Men el Maya. Men el Maya. Lel Maya. Lel Maya. Palestine Arabia. Palestine Arabia. From the water to the water, Palestine is Arab. Men el Maya. Lel Maya. Men el Maya. Men el Maya. Palestine Arabia. Palestine, Arabia. Louder, y'all. <laughs> it's not your common tongue, but louder. Louder in the language of the people that we are fighting in solidarity with. That's right. Men el Maya, lel Maya. Men el Maya, lel Maya. Palestine, Arabia. Palestine, Arabia. Men el Maya, lel Maya. Men el for those of us who are more comfortable in English, from the river to the sea, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. All right, before we begin our program, I wanted to bring my fellow MC, Mo, to read our land acknowledgement. Hello. rally today and I would like to read a land acknowledgement. We are in the historical homeland of the Western Abenaki, Abenaki people. We honor the Abenaki's rich history as the traditional and ongoing stewards of these lands. We know that this land is unceded. European colonialism carried out massive violence, ethnic cleansing, and genocide to steal their land. The U.S., a colonial and imperial power, continues this. We honor both the historical and ongoing resistance of the Abenaki and other indigenous people to settler colonialism. We support their struggles for justice and self-determination. And we must commit ourselves to active solidarity with all struggles for indigenous rights. Free, free Palestine! 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 Thank you. Next to the person with Thank the you, Mo. Shag to their left. Now I want to read our call to action and the demands that we're marching and rallying behind. Our you slogans for this rally are like free, free Palestine, Palestine stop left. Israel's genocidal war. Yeah. Israel has declared total war against okay. the people of Gaza like with the full military, thinking. economic, and diplomatic support of the United States. While the U.S. government denies us health care, climate disaster relief, education, and more, it is sending billions of dollars of aid and military supplies to Israel. Already, Israel has used that to kill and wound tens of thousands of Palestinians and displace more than one million people from their homes. It has destroyed schools, hospitals, mosques, 
churches and civilian housing in flagrant violation of international law and has also carried out attacks in the West Bank and the surrounding region. region. We must stand with Palestinians in their struggle for liberation. So we demand an immediate and, Im and permanent ceasefire. We want an end to Israel's genocidal war. We want an end to Israel's siege, occupation, and apartheid system. We want unrestricted humanitarian aid to all Palestinians. We want all Palestinian prisoners and hostages liberated from Israel's dungeons. We, are, we will defend the civil rights of Palestinians and Palestinian solidarity activists. And we demand an immediate end to all U.S. aid to apartheid Israel. And we want the enforcement of boycotts, divestment, and sanctions against this genocidal regime in Israel. And we support with all our hearts, minds, and bodies, Palestinians' right to self-determination, their right to return to their stolen land, and equal rights in a free, equal, and democratic Palestine. So what do we want? Cease fire. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Cease fire. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Cease fire. When do we want it? Now. All right, Mo's going to read our sponsors and endorsers. I want to say a big thank you to Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation, Vermonters for Justice in Palestine, Students for Justice in Palestine, Jewish Voices for Peace, Cooperation Vermont, Champlain Valley Democratic Socialists of America, Education Justice Coalition of Vermont, Free Her Vermont, Migrant Justice, Party for Socialism and Liberation, Sunrise Champlain Valley, Rural Vermont, Tempest Collective, Upper Valley Affinity Group, Upper Valley Democratic Socialists of America, Vermont Peace Anti-War Coalition, and the Vermont Relief Collective. And to get us moving, up, up with liberation, down, down with the occupation. Up, up with liberation. Down, down with the occupation. Up, up with liberation. Down, down with the occupation. Down, down with the occupation. All right, everybody, we're going to start our program now. First, we have Wafiq Faour from Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. Please give it up to Wafiq. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all for coming out on this weather. Thank you for coming out at this moment for what's going on in Palestine and what's going on in Burlington. Sajjal. سجل أنا عربي ورغب بطاقتي خمسون ألف وأطفالي ثمانية وتاسعهم سيأتي بعد صيف فهل تغضب سجل أنا عربي وأعمل مع رفاق الكتح في محجر وأطفالي ثمانية أسل لهم رغيف الخبز والأثواب والدفتر من الصخر ولا أتوسل الصدقات من بابك ولا أصغر أمام بلاط أعتابك فهل تغضب؟ سجل أنا عربي أنا اسم بلا لقب صبور في بلاد كل ما فيها يعيش بفورة الغضب جذوري قبل ميلاد الزمن رست وقبل تفتح الحقب وفي وفي وقبل السر والزيتون وقبل ترعرع العشب أبي من أسرة المحراث لا من سادة النجب وجدي كان فلاحا بلا حسب ولا نسب يعلمني شموخ الشمس قبل قراءة الكتب 
وبيتي كوخ غناطور من الأعواد والقصب فلا ترضيك منزلتي أنا اسم بلا لقب سجل أنا عربي ولون الشعر فحمي ولون العين بني وميزاتي على رأس عقال فوق كوفية وكفي صلبة كالصخر تخمش من يلامسها وعنواني أنا من خربة عزلاء منسية شوارعها بلا أسماء وكل رجالها في الحقل والمحجر فهل تغضب؟ سجل أنا عربي Right down, I am an Arab. And my identity card is number 50,000. I have eight children. And the ninth is coming after a summer. Will you be angry? Right down, I am an Arab. Employed with fellow workers at Query. I have eight children. I get them bread, garment, and books from the rocks. I do not supplicate charity at your doors, nor do I belittle myself at the footsteps of your champer. So will you be angry? Write down, I am an Arab. I have a name without a title, patient in a country where people are enraged. My roots were entrenched before the birth of mine and before the opening of the eras, before the pines and the olive trees and before the grass grow. My father descends from the family of the plow, not from the privileged class, and my grandfather was a farmer, neither will he bred nor will born. He teaches me the pride of the sun before teaching me how to read. And my house is like a watchman's hut made of branches and cane. Are you satisfied with my status? I have a name without a title. Write down, I am an Arab. Us on this assembly and in this gathering Muslim, Arab, Palestinian, our solidarity group, we charge the President of the United States, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of the State, and this administration of aiding and committing genocide against Palestinian people. Free, free Palestine. 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 Here on this assembly, we should charge the American Congress, Senate, and the House members of a genocide by aiding occupation and apartheid against the Palestinian people in Palestine. That's right. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Here on this assembly, we charge our local officials, governor of the state of Vermont, mayor of the city of Burlington, council members of the city of Burlington, of creating the atmosphere of anti-Muslim, anti-Arab, anti-Palestinian, right. by denying us the right of assembly denying us of passing resolution declaring the right of Palestinian people for human rights, equal rights. That's right. Denying the Palestinian and American solidarity group for the First Amendment, freedom of speech, the right of boycott, divestment, sanction right. against the state of Israel and its apartheid. That's 
Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! We wouldn't be here without the solidarity and the standing up with our sibling, our brothers and sisters, black and brown people. That's right. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! We wouldn't be here without the solidarity with our American indigenous people. That's right. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! We wouldn't be here without the support of our migrants community in Vermont. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Long live the solidarity from our Jewish siblings, from our siblings on LGBTQA community. Free, free Palestine! 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 Solidarity. Thank you, Afiq, for those powerful words and all the work you're doing for Palestinian liberation. Repeat after me the powerful words of the revolutionary Assata Shakur. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Yes, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. I would like to welcome to the stage Michelle Edelman McCormick with Cooperation Vermont. Thank you everyone so much for being here today. Um, I know some of you must be wondering why this little angry person is always out yelling in, in the snow somewhere. And uh, I'm gonna bring him home just a little bit. I understand I'm not here because I'm some good person. I promise you that, that, that ain't it, right? This is not you know, some, some act of like, virtue signaling. I am absolutely in clarity that my liberation is connected to the liberation of Palestinian people. That's right. Absolutely. And I don't want to make it sound selfish, but there is clarity in that, that I will not be free. My children will not be free to live in a world where they are not threatened with constant violence until Palestinian children are living in a world where they're not under constant bombardment. I understand that the exact same forces of oppression are at work there and here. There is zero separation between That's right. that. That's right. right, when we allow our military forces to receive IDF training, our, our police forces to receive IDF training, right, which is happening all over the country, they're employing the exact same tactics of oppression there that they're applying here. And they have every intention of ramping that up. There's not a cop in this country that is in two degrees of separation from that kind of oppressive, militarized training. And for my two young black sons to be able to live in this country without fear of violence from the state, I understand that our struggle is the same with the Palestinian families that we have to do everything that we can as a people collectively to fight these systems of oppression and to understand that it is absolutely, absolutely the capitalist ruling class that is behind all of this. Absolutely behind it. We have to wrench power from the capitalist ruling class back to the workers where it belongs. will have the resources that we need until we do that. And so I'm gonna leave you with this. 
We need to resist, build, and fight. This is a moment of resistance. We stand here in collective solidarity with the Palestinian people. We have to build. There is no project that is too small in our own communities. We have to be building the systems outside of this capitalist system to be able to provide and take care of each other. And then we have to be able to fight to protect it. So I'm gonna need y'all to get real, real busy because we're not all ready, right? On that build piece and stand with us. Thank you, Michelle. One of the outrages that the US government is committing right now is sending a load of 2,000 pound bombs to Israel. Busting bombs designed to flatten Gaza. The Biden administration has greenlit that while it cries crocodile tears about the victims it is causing. The hypocrisy, the stench of hypocrisy oh, in Washington, D.C. boggles the mind. Wipe it off and Shame! Shame! So while we here struggle in Montpelier, in Burlington, in Barrie, with poverty and climate disaster, they're arming, funding, and huh? supporting genocide huh? with it's our so money. Yeah, I got some stuff to tell you. That's why we chant, not another nickel, not another dime, no, no more money for Israel's, Israel's crimes. crimes. Not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for Israel's crimes. Not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for Israel's crimes. Give me some water. Next up, we have Jaina Asaf from Free Her Vermont. Give it up for Jaina. community. Um, as you all know, that Ashley just said, my name is Jaina Ossoff, and I am the lead organizer with Free Her Vermont. And for those who may not know, we are a people-powered group of prison abolitionists. An activist, woo! An activist from the prison abolition and Palestinian liberation movement have long walked hand in hand, always showing up in support and standing in solidarity with each other's struggles, and today is no different. Palestine reminds us of the deep interconnectedness of all freedom and liberation movements and illustrates how none of us are free until all of us are free. The oppression that is faced by the Palestinian people transcends countries, and we can see similar struggles manifest here in the United States. Imperialist and capitalist interests have created an intricate web of oppression and control which has seeped into every corner of this world. It is so beautiful to see such robust expressions of solidarity with international movements, but we must remember the importance of rooting our tactics in a local context so we can be aware of how failing to act against injustice at home may enable injustice across the globe. Vermont is not excused from these discussions and we, have now, we now have to point the fingers at ourselves to reflect on how we may too be inadvertently contributing to the erasure of indigenous peoples and upholding colonization. We just reckon with the fact that a hate crime occurred in Vermont and many seemed extremely shocked that something like this could even happen here, which illustrates how much work we still have to do. That's right. If we cannot see the ways in which our community contributes to the problem, then we fail to progress. Black and brown community members have been ringing the alarm that the presumed exceptionalism of Vermont is not accurate. That's right. Mm -hmm. From the vicious assault of the Melly brothers by the Burlington Police Department mm. to the white supremacists who brought an AR-15 to a Burlington Black Lives Matter rally to the everyday vilification of black and brown leadership, this is not the first time we have seen extreme violence waged against historically oppressed groups in our That's state. Right. It is so crucial we work to identify the ways in which we may unintentionally aid in the oppression of BIPOC people at home and abroad. Gathering together at protests and calling for a ceasefire are just the beginning steps and we must push further with our demands and also work on a grassroots level to change the dynamics that allow for these types of violence to even be committed. To end by quoting from critical resistance statement on Palestine, our vision for a world free of cops and cages does not stop at the constructed borders of the US. PIC abolition is international, and that includes supporting the struggle for the freedom of all Palestinian political prisoners, ending apartheid Israel's prison and jails, 
and for the complete dismantling of its racist and militarized systems of control. That's right. Thank you all for your time, and remember freeing Palestine will free us all. International solidarity forever. Thank you, Dana. Use the anger and grief and want to warm you up and say with me, hey, hey, ho, ho, racist hate crimes have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, racist hate crimes have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, racist hate crimes have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, racist hate crimes have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, racist hate crimes have got to go. Thank you. It is my honor to welcome Kaya Morris up to the stage with a poem. Yes. Thank you all for being here today. My name is Kaya Morris, and I'm standing in solidarity with Palestinians and in the call and demand for peace. I usually would give you a speech, but um, this pain is personal, and uh, it's very visceral, so I decided to place it in a poem. The working title is On Ending the Cycle of Never-Ending Annihilation. They created a blueprint to annihilate the indigenous. That's right. Enslave the Africans, invent whiteness. Murderous, malevolent, manifest destiny. Narcissistic nihilism. Wretched Jim Crow laws carved into the backs of the still enslaved to this day. Keloided flesh Ooh. drawn into a map of depravity denying their own DNA to demand difference, diminishment, discrimination, and dehumanization. An incessant fever-dreamed obsession with the accumulation of power and deep-seated hatred would one day conscript melanated people to fight in a war for freedom while being denied access to their own humanity daily. They lay down their lives for the promise of possibility that the millions of our slain ancestors did not die in vain for the promise of change. Solidarity then spat upon on the first opportunity, fueled into frantic propaganda, pernicious plans to establish a new world order that enshrines the genocide of generations. Each layer of the nation's foundation on an insidious improvement of past violations of humanity used against other peoples. The very same virulent vocabulary used to turn their neighbors into complicit, complicit murders once again now flows freely from their lips to brand our brothers and sisters as property to be liquidated. Still paid at three-fifths of persons, billions of our black reparations stripped and sent to fuel their slaughter abroad. This legacy of white supremacy steals from my coffers, where my black labor is undercompensated to feed white wealth. Reinvested now by these recipients to replicate and perfect apartheid atrocities, fascist dynasties, racist slaughter of the darker skinned and the destruction of democracies across the globe in full defiance of the reasons given for the demand of a new nation state. This moment was intentionally envisioned and the people have been played for fools while our governments and the rich knew all along that this would be the conclusion. Their expertise on the impacts of violent generational oppression is unmatched. And the haunting cries of thousands of children who are collateral damage for those who dance to war drums. There is no moral compass that collaborates or calibrates to this blasphemous strategy that ensures no victors and only violence. My bloodline speaks for a love of people and peace which is mightier than any final solution currently at play. Our world now forever changed. We should never seek to return to the same. We must will it. We must want it. We must craft it. We must never stop demanding peace. Our freedom has always been shared. And together with courageous hearts, we may finally find that the freedom for us is freedom for all. Free Palestine. Woo! 
We stand together and we say no. This racist system's got to go. We stand together and we say no. This racist system's got to go. We stand together and we say no. 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 Next up we have Paul Fleckenstein from the Tempest Collective. Give it up for Paul. <laughs> Sisters, brothers, and siblings. The world can seem upside down, and we have to insist on the context. As the great Jewish-Israeli historian Ilan Pape argues, the Zionist project of Israel for over 75 years has been, quote, taking as much of Palestine as possible with as few Palestinians in it as possible. This is how we can understand 75 years of ethnic cleansing, apartheid walls, occupation, mass killings and detentions, failed peace processes, and the destruction of Gaza. How is this done? Mainly horrific violence, hand in glove with the US. This incremental genocide can only be carried out by dehumanizing Palestinians and through racism and Islamophobia. Finally, for the colonizer, all resistance is terrorism and pretext for further oppression and violence and ethnic cleansing. This is the recipe of settler colonialism that we must completely reject whoever is peddling it, whether Israel, Joe Biden, or Vermont's congressional delegation. That's right. What is happening in Gaza is not an attack on Hamas, but an attack on all Palestinians and against the Palestinian resistance in general and a logical extension of the Zionist project. Our alternative for the liberation of Palestine must be rooted in the Palestinian struggle for liberation, in the regional struggles against the autocratic regimes in Egypt and elsewhere that back Israel and suppress their own democratic movements, in the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement to win equal rights and democracy in all of Palestine in a rejuvenated anti-imperialist left in the U.S. that stands with struggles for self-determination and against occupations everywhere, in Palestine, in Puerto Rico, in Ukraine, and with the indigenous struggles across the Americas. And in a radical commitment to the truth of the great labor slogan, an injury to one is an injury to all. Solidarity. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Thank you, Paul. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid has to fall. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid has to fall. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid has to fall. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid has to fall. By brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid has got to fall. Next up, we have a speaker from the UVM Students for pa Justice in Palestine. Today is a show of force. We are here to show our government, our politicians, our institutions, to the warmongers, to the imperialists, that we are not going away. We are here, and we are here to fight. They are expecting that they can wait us out, that we'll go away if they ignore us for long enough. That has been their strategy for the last two months and for the last 75 years. But this is a turning point. We look to the crowd today and we see hundreds of us representing thousands more in our ranks who are doing more than showing up with signs. We are in our workplaces, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, we are everywhere. We are everywhere. Expect us. And the more they escalate by ignoring us and repressing us, the harder we are going to fight back. And we will win. 
We mourn the dead and we fight like hell for the living. We share the strength of those in Palestine who, despite the greatest effort to break them for 75 years, have never lost their faith in victory. We too say, against all odds, we will win. Because we are right. And we will fight for our victory, and we will fight with everything we have. To the few in the crowd who have not done so already, get down to work. We have a world to win. And in the words of the legendary Fred Hampton, when we dare to struggle, we dare to win. And if you don't struggle, you don't deserve to win. I say dare to struggle, you say dare to win. Dare to struggle! Dare to win! 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 Free Palestine within our lifetime! Once again, it ends with y'all. Men el Maya, el Maya! Thank you, Noor. Next, I'm proud to introduce the whole delegation of members of unions in the state of Vermont who are launching Labor for Palestine. Please give it up to them. We speak as rank and file union members and labor activists from Vermont who support Labor for Palestine. Our fellow union members in Palestine have called on American workers to oppose Israel's ongoing bombardment of Gaza. Israel's crimes are made possible by the United States and Vermont is no exception. From weapons manufacturing, to defense funding, to the F-35s, to broad economic investments, our workplaces are complicit in the illegal occupation of Palestine. Anyone with a conscience must oppose the assault on Gaza. As workers, we have a vested interest in standing with Palestine. The billions of dollars in military aid to Israel could be invested in education, healthcare, public transportation, and jobs. Think of the immense good that we can achieve with that money. For too long, union officials have followed Democrats in lending unconditional support to Israel. This violates every principle of union solidarity and weakens our collective power. But there is an alternative. Rank and file workers standing in solidarity with their Palestinian siblings. Here and globally, workers have blocked shipments of arms going to Israel. They have committed to the principles of the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement. And they have passed resolutions calling for an end to Israel's illegal occupation and apartheid regime. As workers, we have the power to stop the endless flow of arms and money to Israel's war machine. Recently, we saw the United Auto Workers called for a ceasefire in Gaza. This is an important step forward, but we must do more. At this moment of crisis, we must do everything in our power to stop the genocide. We need to go beyond resolutions and build work actions, strikes, and walkouts at workplaces across the state and across the nation. <laughs> to quote the Palestinian trade unions, the struggle for Palestinian justice and liberation is not only a regionally and globally determined struggle, it is a lever for the liberation of all dispossessed 
and all exploited people of the world. So moving forward, come to the Labor for Palestine panel on Tuesday in Burlington. Come to the meeting for the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation next Sunday. Join with Vermont Labor for Palestine. But whatever you do, get organized. Solidarity. All right, next up, we have Earl Hatley, an Abenaki activist and, a, and the president of the Otakwichi Water Protectors. Give it up to Earl. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Earl Hatley. I'm in, in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, I'm Earl Hatley. I'm an enrolled citizen of Abenaki Nation of Missisquoi. Uh, well, I live in uh, the Quichi West Hartford area. Uh, I'm honored to be here with you all today uh, on the bank of Anustuk. Uh, also called the Winooski River. Uh, it's the um, uh, named after our delicious ramps, which we all like to eat. Uh, I don't know if you all know that. I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. I'm originally from Oklahoma, uh, where I lived most of my life. Uh, my father was Chickamaugan um, uh, with uh, Shawnee and Cherokee heritage. Uh, his family was removed from northern Alabama in the early 1800s uh, to Arkansas as one of the first removals of the U.S. government under the Indian removal policy. My mother, uh, who is a Beneke, uh, her family uh, suffered under the eugenics policy of Rhode Island in the 1930s, as did the Abenakis uh, here in Vermont. So I know about colonizers and their policies of removal and repression against minorities. My family and our peoples are examples, and I grew up with these legacies. The Palestinian people suffer from similar col colonial practices by the Israeli government with support of their allies, Britain, the EU, and the US. This began in World War I over the fight to control oil and continued with World War II. The creation of the Israeli state was, I believe, for the security of oil for Western Europe and the US to protect the Arabian Sea shipping lanes and the Suez Canal for their purposes. Today, Hamas and its allies fight with Israel and its allies for control of these areas while their people suffer. Their peoples want peace. With their governments, like their allies, want power. It's the same with Ukraine and Russia. That conflict is also about oil and natural gas pipelines to Europe. The US is now exporting natural gas and oil to Europe in order to take Russia's place in that market. Yay! All this while the planet heats up and future generations' lives are at stake around the world. War is worse for global warming than anything else human beings do. When I was barely 20 years old on my vision quest, Creator showed me a vision for this time. I saw the Earth from space. She was sick. Creator said this is because human beings don't love each other. When I saw humans displaced by Mother Earth's reaction to their hate, they were walking down this road in a line with all their possessions on their backs in fear. There was a fork in the road up ahead. A few people when coming to the fork threw off their burdens and took that road. Then they became happy once again. Creator said, this is the path of love. Then I saw the earth again from space and she was healed and all the people were sharing her abundance. Creator said, you are a warrior for mother earth. 
You are to teach the people to walk the path of love. And the vision was ended. It's this easy. We must learn to love each other, to love ourselves, to stop war, stop hate, and love our Mother Earth. Stop polluting her, and she will heal and heal all of us. We human beings can share her abundance once again together. This is the message. Yet, I see it's harder to love than to hate. As human beings, love is hard. Hate seems to come easy. Why? Why? If we don't stop, there may not be future generations. I say to you today, learn to walk the path of love. It's our only hope. It's our only hope, walk the path of love. Thank you for allowing me to share this message. Believe in me. Believe in me. Oh. Thank you, Earl. In the spirit of his speech, up, up with liberation, down, down with occupation. Up, up with liberation. 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 Just a quick few announcements. First, just a reminder, we encourage everybody to wear masks. You can get them at the medics table. There are also hand warmers there. It's a cold day. Special thanks out to the People's Kitchen and the Rose Corps Collective, which have hot drinks for everybody for free. We don't have corporate drinks. We've got people's drinks. So enjoy them at the People's Kitchen and the Rose Corps Collective. Thanks to the medics and everybody who's working with them. This rally took a lot of money. There will be buckets going through the crowd. We encourage everybody to donate generously. We want this a people's funded movement. We will not rely on corporate dollars to free our people in Palestine and free our people here. So please generate, uh, uh, donate generously. Also, we're encouraging people in Burlington to sign the petition that's circulating in the crowd to put a ballot resolution in the upcoming elections this spring that will give the option of people in Burlington to vote or oppose an apartheid free city. We are confident we are going to win that vote. We want to set a precedent in Burlington that everybody else can imitate throughout the entire state passing resolutions against apartheid in their towns. And then we want to make Vermont an anti-apartheid state. So sign that petition. And also, we are not going to be able to win if we are not organized. So you have to join organization. You have to join the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation. We're going to be meeting at the Friends Meeting House on Saturday, December 9th at 4 p.m. Please come and join us. Also join Jewish Voice for Peace. Join Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. Join Students for Justice in Palestine. The only way we will win is if we organize our mass power to agitate against this government's war machine. My voice. Could everyone move forward a little bit so we can have all the people in the back if make sure they're able to hear? You just scooch up a little bit. And next, I would like to welcome Heidi Wilson, a singer and activist and organizer in climate justice movements and social justice movements, um, performing a song for us. Thank you. Actually, we're all going to be performing this song together. I'll need your help. It's a song by Eric Bogle that was inspired by South African freedom fighters and is still a song important to so many movements and this is a moment also. The words are, courage, my friends, you do not walk alone. We will walk with you 
and sing your spirit home. So many people trying to get home. So if you could repeat after me, that would be really helpful. Courage, courage, my friend, my friend, you do not walk alone, you do not walk alone, yeah, we sound good, and we song except when we sing hmm, you do not walk alone we just get right in that together and when we get to we'll sing your spirit home we just jump right in together on that too here we go and singing's amazing because our bodies are all actually resonating at the same time so let's just really do this Amen. Mm -hmm. courage courage my And we will walk with you and sing your spirit and sing your spirit home. Palestine, Palestine, my friend, you do not walk. You singing this song. I want to sing one more verse and it's for freedom. Anyone can sing the call too. Freedom, freedom, my friend, you do not walk alone. And we will, we Jewish Voice for Peace, <laughs> Deborah Stolaroff, also with Jewish Voice for Peace, and for Vermonters with Justice in Palestine. Hi, uh, I'm Mara Cosentino, and I am here with the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation. I know words. Um, so after we just sing, I invite you all to just move your bodies. We are standing here. We are cold, though. We are moving, and we are passionate, and it's great, you know? Um, and with that, I invite everybody to take the biggest, deepest breath that you have taken all freaking day. And again, take a big, deep breath. 
And now take a big deep breath and make a loud noise when you let it go. Uh. Ah. Ah. Alright, do that again. Take a big deep breath. And make a big ah. to stomping your feet. Move your feet, jog in place, do a little hop, do a little move, do a little dance. Incredible, and bring some movement to your legs. Bring some movement to your body. We are here, we are embodied, we have nervous systems, it's important to co-regulate, we are together on this. All right, all right, incredible. Maybe like do a turn, do a little hop, do whatever you want. This is a great time to be together. Thank you, thank you, thank you, I love to see it. <laughs> All right, and now that we have moved our bodies a bit, give us another big, deep breath. And another one, because breaths are great. And now I invite everybody to take a moment of silence for all the lives that we've lost. Thank you. All right, can people hear us now that folks have come closer to the front? Can I get like a yes or a no? Do we need to be louder? Incredible, thank you. I love to hear that you can hear us. <laughs> louder. Louder, okay, I can be louder. That sounds great. All right, everybody, this is a poem from Hisham Awatani. When you were in 2015 at sixth grade. Hope dwells in my heart. It shines like a light in the darkness. This light cannot be smothered. It cannot be drowned out by tears and the screams of the wounded. It only grows in strength. This light can outshine hate. This light can outshine justice. It outshines segregation and apartheid. As of Greek legend, Pandora opened a box and when she did that, all the evil escaped. But luckily, Pandora closed the jar before hope could escape. And as long as hope stayed in that jar, hope would never escape. So I ask you one thing. Learn to never give up hope. Learn to let hope give power in the darkest of times and let the light shine. Hisham was shot in the back last Friday. These are, that was his poem that he wrote when he was in sixth grade. These are the words that he said from his hospital bed, speaking to his fellow citizens in Gaza and Palestine. It's important to recognize that this is part of a larger story. This hideous crime did not happen in a vacuum. As much as I appreciate and love every single one of you here today, I am but one casualty in this much wider conflict. Had I been shot in the West Bank, where I grew up, the medical services that saved my life here would likely have been withheld by the Israeli army. The soldier who shot me would go home and never be convicted. I understand that the pain is so much more real and immediate because many of you know me, but an attack like this horrific, be it here or in Palestine, this is why when you say your wishes and light your candles today, your mind should not just be focused on me as an individual, but rather as a proud member of people of being oppressed. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid got to fall. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid got to fall. Wall by wall, Israeli apartheid got to fall. Now we're going to hear from some.
Sophie Castle with Jewish Voice for Peace. Hi, everybody. My name is Sophie. I'm speaking to you today as part of the Vermont, New Hampshire chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace one of the many Jewish-led organizations that are standing in solidarity with the Palestinian people. That's right. We join them in demanding a permanent ceasefire, an end to the Israeli occupation, and a political path forward that honors and centers the inalienable rights of our Palestinian siblings, comrades, and friends. That's right. For many Jews, our religious and cultural education prioritized and promoted the foundational tenet of tikkun olam. It translates to repair the world, a central vision within Jewish life to leave the world better than we found it. For many Jews, we are waking up to the reality that when we stand by as Israel systematizes violence against Palestinians, we have neglected the true universal meaning of tikkun olam. We call on our fellow Jews to reaffirm this vision of repair, to oppose the decades of a systemic erasure, apartheid, and destruction of Palestinian life and sovereignty that has been committed in the name of Israel, of Zionism, and of the Jewish people. We say to Netanyahu, we say to Biden, and to those who speak, seek to divide us in our struggle and to profit off of the misery of our Arab and Mo Muslim siblings, we want none of it. And we and we, as Jews, will stand through our grief, through our heartbreak. We will stand in your way. We will make it impossible to continue on this path of endless destruction. We will reclaim our own humanity by standing with the shared humanity of all oppressed peoples. We understand now more than ever that safety is meaningless unless it is universal. As we speak, governments, faith groups, and universities nationally and right here in Vermont claim concern for the safety of the Jewish people while actively pursuing policies and practices that subject Palestinians, Arabs, and Muslims to discrimination, violence, and dehumanization. We say no more. We say not in our name. None of us is safe until all of us are safe. We see through the double speak, we reject it, and we demand that our tax dollars not be used to fund this endless cycle. Lastly, I know I stand here alongside so many who have been in this struggle long before this most recent aggression who have lost friends and family to violence and to conflict, and who will continue to work towards justice even as our collective attention is pulled elsewhere. To those dedicated activists, I say we will not abandon you. I want to leave us with a quote from the Jewish Talmud, a sacred text, a wish for all of us here. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to give up on it. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to give up on it. To everyone here, find your people, find a way to get involved that uses your unique skills. Take care of each other so that we can take care of this movement and know that if we work together, we will win. vision for a world of justice and solidarity buoy us as we stay in this work. Thank you. Woo! Say it with me. Never again is now. 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 Um, next up on the stage, we have Char Denor, the former Poet Laureate of Vermont. It's so heartwarming to be here, to see, see you all. And I, I realize 
the, the difficulty it is to keep this kind of fervor, which is so important, and to maintain it. And one of the ways that we do it is to keep our ears open and our hearts open and our eyes open and never grow tired to the oppression that's happening far away, but that we, with our ears and eyes, can still see. I'm going to read a poem called The Silence, in which um, I imagined when the war first broke out, what was happening there. And it has two epigraphs, one by the wonderful Palestinian poet, Mahmoud Darwish, who died several years ago, but whose poems continue to speak to us. You're standing at the doorstep. Enter and drink Arabic coffee with us. You might sense you're human like us. You standing at the doorsteps of houses. Get out of our mornings. We need reassurance that we are human like you. And then a poem, a brief segment of a poem by the Israeli poet who is just as powerful and committed to peace as Darush, Yehuda Amachai. I want peace right now while I'm still alive. I don't want to walk like that pious man who wished for one leg of the golden chair of paradise. I want a four-legged chair right here, a plain wooden chair. I want the rest of my life peace now. The silence. The silence is deafening here because it amplifies the bombs exploding over there, which no matter how hard I try not to hear, they continue to boom inside the ear, inside my ear where the sounds of that intransigent, ancient war exceed the speed of light on the wings of news. I'm whispering because I can hardly speak in the din that cripples my tongue. I am releasing doves from inside my chest through the door I've opened for them, each one a priest delivering an elegy for a child, parent, sibling, friend who has died at the hand of the enemy, whose God is the same one God. I play a song in vain to subdue the to subdue the silence. Can you hear? The scream grows louder inside the silence. Thank you. Education Justice Coalition of Vermont in our support of Palestine. We envision collective liberation for all people and a world in which indigenous, black, people of color, disability, immigrant, poor, and LGBTQIA plus people can thrive in a culture of belonging that is free of bias, discrimination, and oppression. A future where everyone is free includes a free Palestine. Our vision extends beyond the carceral in the limits of today's repressive systems. We are here today to speak out in solidarity with Palestine and make links between this struggle and relevant po political struggle in Vermont schools. Okay. Many will call for neutrality in teaching about Palestine and Israel. As an Armenian, I am very familiar with the devastating effects of people playing both sides. My people experienced a genocide two months ago, funded by the U.S. And because of the world's neutrality, the perpetrators, Azerbaijan and Turkey, got away with the ethnic cleansing indigenous Armenians of Artsakh. Shame. 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 
Now we face a similar issue. By the words of Howard Zinn, you cannot stay neutral on a moving train. We know that the dominant narrative surrounding Palestine and Israel in schools is often minimized, ignored, or in defense of the imperialistic colonial state of Israel, in defense of the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. Now is not a time to look away or to teach staying silent. Silence is compliance. Silence is violence. While the US government actively and knowingly funds genocide, our schools remain unfunded, our teachers underpaid, and our students unfulfilled. Shame. 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 This December, groups in partnership with the ADL Anti-Defamation League will be presenting at the Vermont Social Studies Teachers Conference. One workshop is being taught on anti-Semitism. We are here today in solidarity with Jewish folks violently targeted by anti-Semitism, both historically and presently, and we assert equally strongly that critiques of the state of Israel are not anti-Semitic. ADL relies on the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. On that description of this, of this definition on their website, they explain that certain expressions of animus toward the Jewish state of Israel many, may at times cross the line into anti-Semitism. This definition of anti-Semitism has been used to silence critiques of Israel and court cases have been brought and won in its name. We're putting a call out to everyone to organize in their local community to ensure that teachers are not silenced and that the truth about the Nakba, the occupation, this apartheid, and the full history be taught in our schools. May we model to our students to fight for justice. Schools can either be sites of social replication and oppression or sites of social transformation. Our students deserve a complete education deserve honest, truthful conversations, and deserve a free and war-free future. All youth deserve a future. Palestinian children deserve to grow up. As we gather, the U.S. is funding the murder of children by the hundreds. We join in the demand for an immediate ceasefire. May all children grow up to see a free Palestine. large quantities of dead as part of its merchandise. Oh. 
God is war? Who profits? Who dies? Does not merely address politics, but the politically guided population as well, and points to the grim fact that death embedded in traditional empathy succumbs to the vast statistics of meaningless anonymous death. Reflected correctly in the empire's budget called defense, meaning aggression, aggression policy, now actively engaged in running the latest horrendous genocide. In whose interest population the democratically elected now openly fascist administration? How will we be allowed to die amicably or falsely as victims of empire design? Neglecting all carefully constructed human safeguards, treaties, international conventions, abandoning all habits of decency and morality, treating its subjects like the shit they are in their eyes, the empire nothings and nowheres, useful only once every four years for a billionaire rigged election. <laughs> we yelling, and if our yelling doesn't reach their disinterested ears, will we invent new yells that are harder to neglect? Will the enough is enough be loud enough? Will they comprehend our, not in our name, not with our money? Will we afford to be subjects to this murderous system? What? could be a worse violation of our human rights than bombing hospitals and send the murderers to investigate the crime. No water, no food, electricity, medicine, the publicly declared intention to kill them all. Where are the screaming institutions of basic human rights? Where are the preventors and stoppers of this ultimate brutality? And has this bombing hospital civilization lost its right to exist? And we, aren't we meant for our birthright? The original glorious whole? Not the accumulated evil of the whole?
which obliges us to our habitual or extra habitual everyday happiness and obliges us and obliges us to fight the genociders. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for your presence and for being here. First off, and let's get moving again, because I don't know about you, but I still have a body, and I trust you still have bodies, and they still gotta move. All right, so jump, so move, so spin, so do whatever the heck you want with your body if you want to do that with it. All right, and repeat after me, Viva, Viva, Palestina! Viva, Viva, Palestina! So if you want to do that, go do that while you listen. And next up, we have Wes Palmer from the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Breathe. Repeat after me. In our thousands, in our millions. In our thousands, in our millions. We are all Palestinians. We are all in our millions, in our billions. In our billions, in our billions. We are all Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. In our thousands, in our millions. In our thousands, in our millions. We are all Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. In our millions, in our billions. In our millions, in our billions. We are all Palestinians. We are all Earlier this week, three Palestinian students were shot by a white supremacist in the city of Burlington. Islamophobic and anti-Arab hate crimes have escalated in the United States, enabled by the government's unconditional backing of the state of Israel and its genocide in Gaza. That has resulted in the death of over 15,000 innocent Palestinians. Do you trust the media that lies about our Palestinian brothers and sisters? The media that sympathizes with the shooter? Do you trust our government? Do you trust the racist, militarized police force trained by the IDF soldiers? No! 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 no. no. Real democracy and real safety would mean no excuses for hate crimes, no enabling of genocide. It was not the police or politicians who first came to those students' aid at that night. It was one of us. They rescued each other. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. As socialists, we recognize that in the words of Hisham Awatani, this is part of a larger story. And in the words of Hassan Qadafani, imperialism has laid its body over the world. Wherever you strike it, you damage it and serve the world revolution. Palestinians and BIPOC Americans, black, indigenous, people of color, and United States have the same enemies and our freedom is tied together. The common enemy of ours lays the foundation of our alliance with the Palestinian people. We know what it's like to face dehumanization, checkpoints, imprisonment, police repression, vigilante violence, and a global militarized system working against us for profit. However, we are all more than just an oppressed people. We are leading the resistance and building a better world. We recognize the brave Palestinian people, fathers, mothers, children, reporters, doctors, teachers, and care workers, emergency responders, artists who risk their lives for their people every single day. Because of them, people across the globe 
see their own humanity in the faces and stories of Palestinians. This solidarity terrifies the capitalist Zionist regime and the evil it spawns, racism and imperialism. Their propaganda is failing. Support for Palestine is growing every single day. <laughs> Protests and organizations are increasing in size frequency and focus, not just in the United States, but across the globe. This is why, no matter who you are, you have to contribute to the cause. Showing up to protest, posting, these are great, but to keep the movement moving, we need to organize. We learn from the Palestinian resistance the importance of organization. To quote Malcolm X, we are not outnumbered, but out-organized. Yes. Building revolutionary organization is how we not just scare, but defeat the ruling class. <laughs> there is only one solution. Intifada revolution. Only one solution. Thank you very much. Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry! Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry! Palestine will never die! Palestine will never die! Men el mayor, el mayor! Men el mayor, el mayor! Palestine, Arabia! Palestine, Arabia! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Now, please welcome April Fisher from the Burlington Tenants United and Food Not Bombs. I'm speaking to you all today as an anti Zionist Jewish woman. As a person whose Jewish ancestry goes back countless generations, I refuse to allow Zionists to say that Israel stands for Jewish values or acts for the liberation of Jewish people. Please take a hard look at the genocide happening in Palestine right now and ask yourself, is this what liberation for Jewish people looks like? No! Once Israel bombs every last hospital, every last school, every last kindergarten classroom, will Jewish people then be liberated? No! no! As Israel blocks humanitarian aid from entering Palestine, forcing doctors to perform surgeries without anesthetics, are Jewish people any closer to liberation? No! The root of today's violence lies in a century-long white supremacist settler colonial project. It began with the British, who had the anti-Semitic goal of ridding England of Jews and establishing Western imperialist control over Palestine. Between 1948 and 1967, Israel expelled over a million Palestinians from their homeland and captured 78% of historic Palestine. Since 2007, Israel has maintained a suffocating blockade on Gaza, turning it into the world's largest open-air prison. In this latest chapter of genocide, Israel has killed more than 15,000 Palestinians, including 5,500 children. One out of every 200 children in Gaza have been killed since October 7th. Now, are Jewish people any closer to liberation? No! no! Liberation for Jewish people means ending cycles of violence. Liberation for Jewish people means a ceasefire. That's right. Demilitarization. No! Decolonization. No! Liberation for Jewish people means liberation for Palestinians. Yes. Thank you.
hello, hello, hello again, people. So next I'm going to welcome to the stage Heidi Wilson. And while we are singing, again, move your bodies. Do what you need because we are all standing here and we need to co-regulate. So Heidi Wilson, thank you. Yeah. All right. This is a song that was sung just recently in the last couple of days at a rally in New York, and I thought maybe we could add our voices to it from here. Yeah. It's like got some call and response, and then everybody all in again, kind of like last time. So let's start by learning the everybody in part. It goes. It goes. We call for a ceasefire. Try that. We call for a ceasefire. Let's do it again. We call for a ceasefire. That's right. One more time. We call for a ceasefire. My turn. Raising our voices, raising our voices. Higher and higher, higher and higher. No more, no more war, war. We call for a ceasefire. That's it. Raising our voices, raising our voices. Higher and higher, higher and higher. No more, no more war, war. We call for a ceasefire. Raising our voices, raising our voices. Higher and higher, higher and higher. No more, no more war, war. We call for a ceasefire. One more time, raising our Thank you, Heidi. Next up, we have Yobani Moreno from Migrant Justice. And could we also call Rowan, Rowan up to the stage, please? Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? How y'all doing? Con un poquito de frío, ¿verdad? Love the cold, huh? Mucho frío, yo sí siento frío. A lot of cold, a lot of cold. Mi nombre es Giovanni, vengo de México. My name is Giovanni, I'm from Mexico. Y estoy aquí en representación de la Organización de Justicia Migrante junto con mis demás compañeros que pueden ver acá detrás de mí. And I'm here representing the organization Migrant Justice alongside my compañeros that you see behind me. Es un pequeño grupo que nos acompaña el día de hoy. Este, sin embargo, muchos de ellos, este, de mis compañeros, están en las granjas trabajando o rendiendo las vacas. And we have a small group here with us today, but we have many more scattered around the state in the barns and milking parlors, milking cows. Me hubiese gustado que estuviéramos reunidos aquí por una ocasión de celebrar algo bonito. Algo que, que nos agrada, algo que nos haga sentir feliz. And I wish we could all be here gathering to celebrate something, to engage in something that brings us joy. Sin embargo, estamos acá por una triste realidad, no, este, por nuestros hermanos de Palestina que están sufriendo. But unfortunately, what brings us here today is the sad reality of the suffering of our Palestinian siblings. Es triste no ver que nuestros hermanos de Palestina están sufriendo y, y cuál es la realidad, el por qué. ¿Se ha preguntado usted el por qué está así? And as we bear witness to the suffering of our Palestinian siblings, we must ask ourselves why. Yo lo resumiría el poder, la discriminación, el racismo. And at its root, this is a question of power of racism, of discrimination. Y por eso estamos acá, estamos conscientes de eso, y estamos acá para exigir a, a los gobiernos, porque no solo lo que es Estados Unidos este, está así, sino en muchos otros países, exigimos a los gobiernos que ya pare todo esto. And that is why we are here in solidarity 
to demand not just of the United States government, but of all those governments around the world that are complicit in this to put it to an end. Y en esta ocasión vamos a pedirle de manera, ahora sí, muy especial al presidente Biden, porque es el que sabemos que está, digamos, proporcionando los medios para que todo esto esté pasando ¿no? con el pueblo de Palestina. But among all those governments, we want to single out President Biden for a particular message because we know that he is responsible for providing the means for this genocide. Nosotros los mexicanos estamos tenemos algo común con con Palestina. As Mexicans, we know that we have much in common with Palestine. ¿Por qué digo esto? And why do I say that? Porque hace unos años atrás, si ustedes se dieron cuenta, este, el presidente de Estados Unidos manda construir el, el muro. Because many of you will remember, years ago, the presidents of the United States began talking about building a wall. prohibiendo así el paso a muchos mexicanos en el cual muchos vienen acá buscando un futuro mejor para su familia. A wall to prevent the migration of Mexicans who are coming to search for a better life for ourselves and our families. Entonces, ¿qué está pasando ahí? Entonces el gobierno, las autoridades están este, como prohibiendo así el poder dar una oportunidad a, a las personas a tener una vida mejor. The governments, the authorities are advancing policies to prevent our people from living a better life. Y es por eso que estoy acá como persona, como ser humano, uniéndome a, al pueblo de Palestina. Bueno, no, yo, yo no, no le puedo llamar pueblo, le puedo llamar hermano, porque eso es lo que somos en realidad. And that's why I am here as a human being to show my solidarity with the Palestinian people. And beyond calling them the people, I say my Palestinian siblings. Y exigimos de manera muy fuerte que ya pare todo esto, que pare el genocidio que se está llevando a cabo contra el pueblo de Palestina. And we demand in the strongest possible terms an immediate end to the genocide against Palestinian people. Y voy a terminar con esta frase. And now I want to end with a chant. Que viva Palestina! Viva, 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 viva Palestina! Viva, viva Palestina! Viva, viva Palestina! Viva Palestina! Viva, 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 viva Palestina! When Yobani speaks, he speaks about the apartheid, not only in Israel, but right here in the United States. Because in the United States, migrant workers are denied basic rights to citizenship, to unionization, to the right to drive, to the right to be, to the right to be free. There's apartheid in Israel. There's apartheid in the United States. That's why we chant, from Palestine to Mexico, border walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, Border walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico. Border walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico. Border walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico. Border walls have got to go. Next up, we have Rowan V. Wade from Sunrise at Dartmouth and also an SJP activist on Dartmouth campus. Give it up to Rowan. 
Hi, thank you so much for being here. This is such an honor to get to speak to you all. Um, so I'm here to share a bit of my story about getting arrested by my college campus. By Speak up loud into the mic. Okay. I'm here to share a bit of my story about getting arrested by Dartmouth College for protesting for divestment from Israeli apartheid. Sure. But this isn't just my story. Across the country, we have seen our universities crack down on activism in solidarity with Palestine. We have been threatened, doxxed, faced threats of suspension, and even arrested. Claims from our universities to support free speech crumble when our demands threaten their monetary interests and their financial investments in the settler colonial regime that is Israel. As students, we must hold our universities accountable for funding and profiting off of the ongoing gen genocide in Gaza, and we cannot let their attempts at suppression stop us. <laughs> Dartmouth is an institution with an $8 billion endowment, and they must divest from Israeli apartheid. That's right. <laughs> and we've been fighting for this for years. Most recently, this past October, we held an ongoing occupation that lasted for over a week. We were there 24-7. And we were there to mourn the loss of Palestinian lives because the college refused to. The college hosted and endorsed a vigil at which our president spoke at that specifically only mourned the loss of Israeli lives. The entire week, we were peaceful. We were demonstrating, we were showing solidarity, we were building community, yet the administration and campus security threatened us, suppressed us, intimidating us intimidated us the entire time, which, which culminated in our arrest. While demonstrating, I was arrested for criminal trespassing. And to reiterate, again, we were peaceful the entire time, but the the day after we were arrested, the president of Dartmouth released a statement and sent it out to every member of our campus community claiming that we had been violent. This, this was a dangerous rewriting of history to justify their needless escalation. And these baseless accusations play into the racist rhetoric that condemns all Palestinians and those who stand in solidarity with Palestine as terrorist sympathizers. This rhetoric, this rewriting of history, has contributed to the rise of Islamic, Islamophobic hate crimes both on our campus and across this country that have devastated our communities. So we must hold Dartmouth accountable. We must hold every college accountable, every company, every government representative across this country accountable for the violence they are causing and complicit in. The suppression that we're facing, especially on college campuses, is terrifying. But we cannot let these threats and intimidation isolate us. When you take action for Palestine, you have the solidarity and support of all of us. So keep taking action. Keep organizing. Join groups. There are so many here. Please join whatever you can. And if you're in the Hanover area or in the Upper Valley, we will be hosting an action on this Monday, December 4th. We'll be meeting outside of the Bakerberry Library at 6.15 and protesting the President, President Bylock's welcome tour, where she will continue to justify her needless escalation, continue to spout this extremely um, dangerous rhetoric that claims that we are violent and endangers members of our community. And so join us at 6.15 to continue protesting for divestment from Israeli apartheid. Thank you. Thank you, Rowan, for sharing your story. I, I say when, Pal when Palestine is oppressed, boycott sanctions and divest. 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 Thank you. Next up, we have Sam Bliss. Move this 
Going to interview people now. I'm hoping it's over to so I can get out of the car. Mind if I cut past you? <laughs> He's back! I'm back, I got my Most camera now. Kill you, man. <laughs> I know. So where do you go to school, dude? I'm at UVM. Yeah? Right. Yeah. What year? Oh, uh, that's a difficult question. Fourth year. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'll end works. up doing another one. You're gonna end up doing. Are you communications or media? What I'm environmental doing? studies. Oh, okay. But media related. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So the media class you're taking? Oh no, I'm <laughs> doing it. I'm doing it just a separate from school paid internship. Oh, okay. With this, even but, better. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. My senior year at Johnson State College. <laughs> before, if you go on camera, I don't want to say about that. Okay. So before I worked in the state house in '88, January to June, as a legislative aide, a full-time intern to the ACLU. Ah. That's how I learned the building. I work in the I work in the state house. Now really? I just do most of it by Zoom. But okay. I've been working in there over 20 years, mm. and I learned it. It's a trade. Working in the building is like a trade. It's not really something you can learn in college. Yeah, no, you, you can definitely got to gotta get the experience. Yeah, you get, you got to work in the building, man. It's a process. Yeah. So it's funny because you mentioned interns. I always tell people everybody should do at least a semester internship that's not just a couple hours a day, but like Consistent. at least half time. Yeah, exactly. Mine was full time. I did four days a week down here. I had one con law class. I went to my con law class. And then the rest of time worked here. here. Yeah. Yep, all in one day. They do that as From like... Johnson. They offer like semesters abroad for doing that, but otherwise I'd be like a part-time yeah, student. Yeah, or if you're if the um, if the trade or area of expertise offers it, do it in the summer. But yeah, I that's tell a, that's people, a man, difficult get thing. Get it? Because just you need a well-paying thing for the summer right now. I mean, in terms of cost, you can't pay for that kind of resume. Cost of living is so high right I mean, now. I it's put like, on my resume that I was a legislative aide to the right. executive director of the ACLU, and I was like in the door. Yeah, I'm gonna interview <laughs> her over there, and Whatever then I'll come interview you. I don't care if you even talk to me again, except friendly. You still happy to do an interview? Sure. Okay, let's do it. Sure. Alright. So, uh, what's your name and who are you here with today? My name is Lynn Caulfield. I'm here just with my friends. <laughs> We're, we're just a group. We're not anything formal. And what's going on today? Well, the folks across the street are trying to free Palestine. <laughs> but I'm not sure they know what that means. Um, and I think we all agree that we want peace and justice in the world. But if Hamas laid down their arms right now, there would be peace. But if Israel laid down their arms right now, there would get annihilated because it's no secret that Islamic jihadists, part of their charter is to annihilate all the Jews, and they've said it, they admit it. So, mm -hmm. okay. we want to stand in support of Israel. Um. 
what would you what would a constructive conversation look like for you between American Zionists and American anti-Zionists? Um, I, well, I think if we're all going to agree in for peace in the world, that the only way that can happen is through the Prince of Peace. You know, Jesus the Messiah came, and we're celebrating his birth this month. Um, really, the only way to overcome hate is with love, and the only two source of love is Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, can you expand on how Jesus would help with, and the discussion of Jesus would help with the conversations between Zionists and anti-Zionists in America? Yes, because if the Jewish history is in the Bible, in God's Word, so, um, you know, Jesus loves all people, and if people embrace the truth of God's Word, then there would be peace on the earth, because people would realize that God ordained Israel and ordained uh, borders for Israel, and, and they're outlined in the Bible, and not to the exclusion of, of Palestinians or Gentiles, because he came to save all the Jews and Gentiles. So, yeah. and so, Jewish people don't recognize the New Testament in their faith. So, are you saying that they should recognize the New Testament, and that is the path to peace, or are you saying that they should just they will? Yes. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these events that have happened recently and well, well Ju Israel became a state in 1948 but in the, the Bible prophesies about the Jews returning to the land and actually as a result of October 7th a lot of Jewish people are returning to Israel they're flocking back to Israel to their homeland because that's really the only place they can be safe <laughs> um What has been your favorite part of being out here today? Talking to people like you. <laughs> it's been a real blessing just to have folks come across and just, you know, some, a couple of guys came here saying, we just wanted to share the love and we're, we're glad you're here. We, you know, we're, we're not against anybody. And so that was a real blessing to us. That's really awesome. Uh, have you ever been to Israel? I have. I, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, I had just, I went to Israel from, I had been on a medical mission trip in Uganda, and I went from Uganda to Israel. And it was just amazing to see the land of the book, to see the land of Jesus, and to see where Jesus walked. But we went to the shrine of the book, which has like the whole scroll of Isaiah that was found in the Qumran caves. And we also toured Yad, Yad Vashem. And our tour guide kind of let us do that on our own. So we were just going through the museum, and it's, it was just um, so impactful. It was it's a wonderful experience. I'd recommend it to anybody. <laughs> uh, Actually, I'm trying to go back to Israel. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a nurse and a farmer, and I know a lot of folks there, uh, some, a lot of the farmers in Judea, Samaria, which is called the West Bank, um, the farmers lost their workers after October 7th, so they've got crops that need to be harvest, harvested. So, And because I'm a nurse, if I was able to go over there, I'd try to do some nursing work as well. <laughs> uh, while you were in Israel, did you meet any Palestinians or speak with any Palestinians? Oh, sure. And, and actually, I went on another trip uh, a couple years before I went to Israel to Egypt. So we had Muslims and Christians and all sorts of people standing in line waiting to get to our... <clears throat> Sorry, health clinics. So yeah, it was just an amazing experience. So, thank you so much for talking with me today. Um, hope you have a good day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All right. You can pick one of the breakout groups and say, Bill, do you mind being in this breakout group? Do you want to do a quick like one? What we would call a canter or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, was a woman and she um, she was leading the group and that was the she was in my group. You want to do a quick one? Yeah, do me a favor though first. Can you can, can, Lynn, can you hand these? me that? You can you what? Can I have one of these for my my wailing wall wall? Yes, you can. Thank you. I'm trying to take them all home though. Okay. Can you hand me the bag? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, I want to be ready to put them away in yes. case because we might have an onslaught yeah. of people who come over to go. We're going to convince you that you're just a bunch yeah. of white supremacists. I don't think they're going to come. No, no we've had talk a few. To when they break that. up, there'll be a few. 
I'm there sure a couple, already. yeah. <laughs> mm. We've had our we've had our share. Well, if I'm close. here with the camera for now, then I don't right? think it's gonna get too <laughs> well, crazy. I, I also have a nine foot pole and pepper spray, so <laughs> True. please. So, what would you like to ask me, young man? I'd like to ask first your name and who you're here with today. Uh, William Moore. I'm from Johnson, Vermont, and I chose to come here and bring some friends. There's no organization. Okay. Uh, what are you all here to do today? What's your goal? Um, the best description I can give you is we're standing as watchmen on the wall, being a witness on behalf of Israel against the false... Oh, yeah. We're trying to be watchmen on the wall and witnesses against the false policies and false beliefs of this movement, which is really about erasing Israel from the face of the planet. Unfortunately, a lot of the people there are also so quite ignorant of the history and the military, what's that? The people there across the street at the protest are quite ignorant of the history and the ideology of what they're supporting. So. You know, we got to give them a lot of grace for not understanding the history. So that's why we're here. Where do you think the core disconnect comes from between you and your people and the people across the street? Well, f personally, I take a biblical view of Israel's right to exist, which is in Genesis chapter 12 through 18 to start with if you want to look it up. But the primary idea that any people that's been kicked around for four or five thousand years by every empire and every major power over and over and has landed with their feet on the ground their language and culture intact and have a state those are people that were, are worth defending I mean that the idea that Israel exists that the Jewish language exists the Jewish culture exists at all well correct that it exists at all is a miracle upon miracles upon miracle. So the idea that they're here fighting for their existence yet again is not surprising. What surprises me is that our young people especially are basically parroting anti-Semitic slogans and Hamas policy and Hezbollah policy as some sort of solution erase Israel and everything will be okay is kind of what you're hearing today. And I'm oversimplifying it, but that would be my answer. Mm -hmm. um, so would you say you have a lot of knowledge of biblical texts and whatnot? I'm going to keep holding it real quick later. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you know about the Canaanites in the Old and New Testament? I do. The Canaanites, the Malachites, Moabites, you got it. Yeah, I understand. I've been I've been hearing recently that people have been able to trace back the lineage of many Palestinian families to specific Canaanite families. What are your thoughts on that? If you trace the genealogies and genetics, they're finding that the Canaanite strain is in Jordanians, Syrians, Egyptians, Lebanese, all across the whole area. It's sort of a generic strain. Also many Jews because of intermarrying. We're going back 5,000 years, so there, there, there is no distinct Palestinian people genetically. You just proved the point. Because, there, well, there's no distinct Palestinian people amongst the Middle East regions. They share DNA and ethnicity and culture and Islamism mm -hmm. uh, across many, many countries in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um. Go ahead, ask me what you're going to just ask me about Islamism. No, I, was, I don't have a question about Islamism. I'm not sure if that's the word I would use. Islam and Islamism as like a political thing. That's not what my question is going to be about. I want to keep on this. I understand, but I'd like to continue talking about the Canaanite genealogy and sure. tracing back lineage. Okay, well, you're uh, a little off my scientific background, but I'll do my best. Okay, they've been able to trace their lineage back to specific, like, homes and sp the exact area of the Levant. And that is the geological term for that region. How specific? To like on the coastline or in the mountains in a certain area. Sure. Back to the times of the Jewish people being in that land. 
Yeah, um, previous to that, when the, when Greece mm-hmm. and Cyprus sent um, um, sailing tribes of people to the region for trade, and they were the first ones to be referred to as the Philistines, which is the old word for Palestine. So you could argue that the only people with a proper actual right to call themselves Palestinians are people with the Greek Cypriot um, ancient sailing genetics. So, and they're not there anymore. Yeah. So your argument's sort of specious. I'm not making an argument. No, no, I mean, I'm your point is, the science is kind of specious. Okay. So you want to? We want to move off that topic. All right. Let's move off that topic. Neither yeah. one of us are experts. Neither one of us. I'm are citing specific things and asking your opinions on them. I'm not yeah. trying to make a point here. Um. I don't take a lot of stock in genetics. I don't either. I think genetics is a silly game to yeah. play. Uh. Because I have every right to be a Christian, and you have of course. every right to be a Jew. Right. Even if you were born Irish and I was born Jewish, you can become one of them by choice. Just as you can become, you can. I can. He, I don't fully understand what you mean here. My friend Martin. My friend Martin may have grown up as whatever, but he can become. He could convert to Judaism, right? Yes. I can convert to Judaism. I, yes. I, a, a Muslim, and there are a lot of them that do it, can convert to Judaism or Christianity. Mm-hmm. So and vice versa what, as well. So what does it have to? Why are they asserting an ethnic, genetic, tribal, nation, nation state right? to the land. That's the question that they're confronted with. But wouldn't you say that Jewish people are doing the same thing, or are you saying they're only asserting a religious right to the land? Oh, you'd have to ask the Jewish people that question. All right. I am a Jewish person, and I'm I'm saying... Go to Genesis 12 through 18, and you'll see where the land was given to you. Okay. And then they fought for it, and they won it. And ever since then, every major power, major empire under particularly the Western empires, have kicked them to the curb, tried to destroy them, and most recently under Nazi Germany, tried to eliminate them. And yet, I wouldn't even say that's the most recent. No, that's, you could make that argument. You're right. Yeah, but the most recent in modern history. It, the mo- I think the biggest in, mo- in modern scale, history. Scale. Yeah, large scale. Truly. Yep. Um, I'm Jewish. Congratulations. And thank you so Shabbat much. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> and shalom alaikum. Mm. And so I was speaking with one of your friends here, and they said that the solution would be for Jewish people to convert to Christianity. Do you... One of the people here said that? The person I just interviewed over there, I think her name is Mary. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't know. I don't know why she was saying that. But whoever had the flag over there and left a bit ago, what's her name? Lynn? Lynn? Yeah, I don't know that argument. Yeah, that was a confusing argument. Um, that was what she said would be a constructive conversation between the people on this side of the street and the people on that side of the street. What would a, con- what would a constructive conversation Destroy. between... I think it's supposed to be BB. It's, it's Bread and Puppet doing performance art. They, they were hitting him over the head with... Oh, their hammers. statue of the guy. They want peace. Yeah, they want peace. I think so. so. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Um, what would a constructive conversation look like between y'all over here on this side and people over there on that side? What do you think a constructive conversation would look like? I would try to teach them a little history. That's all I would try to do. I, I don't think I convince. I can't unconvince someone of an ideological position or a radical revolutionary position. I can only give them the history to make those leaps on their own. I mean, there's so much propaganda that's been taught through this, the high schools and the colleges. And with that age range, pretty much everybody over there has been taught that there's... Been over there in the age right, range, it's very It's wide. broad, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So pretty much everybody there has been exposed to some level of propaganda about DEI and all of the self-identifying by your tribalism. And all of that is divisive. It's, it's not helpful. What is DEI? Diversity, equity, and, and inclusion. inclusion. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and also the, the whole concept of identifying yourself by immutable characteristics like the color of your skin or your ethnicity. That's why I'm not a big fan of DNA stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it's irrelevant. You're who you are based on who you were born with and what family brought you up and the beliefs you have. That's, who def- that's what defines. You're who God says you're going to be. 
So your values and your community define you far more than physical characteristics. And I can't redefine those people. I can only teach them the facts of history and let them make those leaps on their own. So would you say that uh, sharing values and community with people on the other side would be an end goal of a constructive conversation? It would be fantastic to think that that could happen on some level. But if you were standing here a few minutes ago, we had a woman who came over and was offended she was she was offended by the fact that we were quote counter protesting and we said look we're just standing as witnesses we're not confronting we purposely are on the other side of the street and she started getting into it with us and then she called our arguments white supremacists mm-hmm. and i said okay we're done once you once you try to say because i'm white i can't have a thought and i can't have free speech we're done yeah. and she wouldn't let up she wouldn't let up and finally the security people came over and kind of encouraged her to step aside, which was good because she doesn't represent those people. Those people over there want to talk. They want to know something. Um, She's just an example of the kind of, I don't know, the kind of rage that's in this, like on college campuses, you know? People are being beaten and Jews are being targeted because of this ignorance, because of this I mean, theology. This is political yes, theology. Yes, but also three Palestinian men were shot in Burlington, and we can't forget that. A man who's mentally disturbed, and there's no evidence whatsoever that he had the slightest religious position on their ethnicity or their kafayas they were wearing. As far as we know, it was a random event by a nut job. If you're looking at the police statements and the investigative statements, you'll know that. Hello. Hi there. How are you, ladies? We're here. Can, he, can you, uh, we're interviewing, so, yeah, go ahead and talk to them. You want to turn around and? Yeah, you can talk with them. Yeah, or you can just conclude and talk to them, I don't care. I could, but I, I don't know if they want to be. Yeah, I don't I know. have to ask first. Sounds like they want to talk. Oh. That was distracting. Yeah, well, uh, I appreciate that. So, would you say that y'all are bearing witness in the Quaker sense of bearing witness, or would you just say that you are standing here as? No, more in the, in the sense of, uh, the watchmen in the wall in the history, in the biblical history of Israel, the watchmen in the wall were, they did two things. They, they stood vigil to watch for enemies, to watch for outside dangers to the Jewish people, to their relationship with God, to their righteousness. But they also looked inward to the people's wanderings in their hearts and minds and spiritual wanderings towards idols, worshiping other gods, covetousness, lust, and so on that were be seen as sins that would separate them from their relationship with God. So being a watchman isn't to stand on a wall and look out for enemies. It's also to look for the enemies within you in a spiritual sense and, and within the culture that destroy it from within. So that's why I use the word watchman. Yeah. And who would you say the spiritual enemies are most specifically? Well, I think the hate and rage that gets attached to the political position. So there's a political position underneath all this. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, right? Free speech. Uh, as I told the organizers and security people, I said, look, we share one thing today. We're free speech warriors. I'm going to be on here, and I'm going to stay out of your face. I'm not going to be confrontational. I ask you to do the same. We all agreed. In order to do that, you have to live in a society where that's tolerated. And I'm sorry, You've seen the videos on the streets of New York and the streets of some of the college campuses where people like me, our flags are ripped down and we're beaten, okay? Mm -hmm. I've seen the same thing from both sides, to be honest with you. Fair enough, absolutely. But fortunately, we live in this Vermont, you know, and everybody's kind of, oh yeah, we'll get along and this and that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you heard the rage. If you didn't hear the rage in the speeches and the rage in the chants, that feeds that. Instead of having discussions and arguments like and to, so on, that, like that feeds that ask rage. A question related to that. Yeah, uh, and that's a spiritual problem. You yes, about the spiritual problems, and it's when you feed someone's rage, particularly if it's based. So the on rage is being fed on the ground. by ignorance. Right. Okay, um, I agree. Yeah. Rage can be dangerous. Yeah, and the leadership and the speaker should pay for that spiritually too. And what would that look like? Rage. Also, I don't have oh, much that's time. That's his job, office. not mine. Okay, that's God's job. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know that well. Yeah, I do. <laughs> what is your favorite part of being out here today? Other people showing up to stand with me. 
Uh, do you have any plans related to this for the future or just general plans? We're going to try to keep as many of these people in contact and people who couldn't make it today. And as I told the organizers over there, every time they have an event like this, whether it's in Burlington or Brattleboro or Montpelier or Morristown, we're going to be standing witness. Okay.